Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good morning, or whatever time it is for you. Welcome to the Red Gaming Phoenix League. It's the Platinum League. It's the first game of Group A. It's going to be an absolute banger, I'm sure of it. I'm Liffy, and on my side, it's Quill. Good evening to you, sir. How are you doing? I am doing very good. Good evening. It's 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 looking actually really interesting. Uh, this this game first first game of the of the groups of the platinum stage. Uh, um, it's already looking like a banger. Yeah, and we had a we had a pretty uh, tame preseason, and now that the uh, preseason is over, we can get the uh, really interesting changes in, and uh, just in time we got some good old patch twelve point three action going on. We got some item reworks. We got Jenna reworks. We got Ari reworks. We got a new champion on the rift. So lots of stuff that can go wrong in these games. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm all here for it. Anything that you're expecting that can go wild today? I mean, looking looking at these players, uh, they like they have three players that have some very prominent picks. Like picks they've put a lot of time and effort into it, and all three are are like really aggressive. And I think they're really good right now. So um, I'm actually like I'm I'm like guessing on a on a lot of action. Looking at the the more played champions from both teams. Oh, definitely some targets for uh, for some uh, target banning. I think there was some Shivana I, th I saw, some Viego that might uh, get under the wheels at some point. We got some interesting stuff going on, but overall, uh, I'm f I'm kind of I'm kind of expecting something along the lines of the usual meta. Of course, still hyper carries are very very popular right now, and uh, especially if you look towards uh, some of the uh, NA games, LCS, we saw Ivern mid and Chanters in different positions. Making a little bit of a comeback. Yeah, and the the enchanter um, showing up everyone everywhere again actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm really like completely dug into Ivern, especially since he he's a he's an enchanter that works well with melees and not uh, not a ranged enchanter. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am I'm definitely all for enchanters. I mean, as a as a top lane player myself, I, I personally uh, obviously hate most enchanters like the Lulu <laughs> and the Soraka top lane. Uh, every, every, everyone that has played longer than three years remembers Soraka top lane taking over the whole game. Yep. Um, it, it, it's it's it wasn't a very nice meta, but I, I am I, I do accept it. Like I I still I still like accept its existence and um, yeah, we talked about it before stream, right? The, the Janna top. Are you expecting to potentially see? Uh, some aggressive roaming top with smite flash uh quite Jana honestly action. i don't think so i don't think so but you mentioned the soraka we are off into draft already and uh the soraka is banned out so is the yumi we mentioned the shivana she is gone as well on top of that put the usual corky the viego ban on top of it and we might even see a third support ban here with the janner being hovered right now there she is or well at this point, I should actually say it's a flex pick between top and support after all, right? <laughs> but she's gone, and we we got the Caitlyn, and that kind of leaves uh, the question for me: Is the Lux going to be picked up immediately afterwards for this? Uh, I, I you would expect maybe with with Caitlyn to just instantly see the Lux, but seeing this Nautilus pick, I mean, it would almost be suicide, right? Like Nautilus is just it's very hard to play as a ranged support into a Nautilus, so I would be surprised to see it. Camille being picked up, very standard. I think this is a good blind pick. There's there's not you not much you can pick here, especially since the enemy top laner doesn't seem to um, pick a lot of counters from it. Like it doesn't play the Trinomir or this this Wukong or or anything aggressive like that. Victor Leona. Mm. That's Interesting a, that, rotation. That's a strong. That's a strong first three. Kicking up Caitlyn with Leona, um, um, I mean it makes sense. Like Leona is more like the counter pick into Nata this year, and Caitlyn does well with any 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 type of support with like good amount of CC. Victor yeah. being picked up, this is good, good push, good roam, uh, could actually get something done. I'm really curious what the uh, Jaeger is gonna pick here on, on on number three. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting question. Actually, a quick Vi log in that would be the jungler, I assume, and uh, that leaves a lot of potential bans left for the mid lane for the AD carry position here, and uh, I'm really curious what might come out here. We see the Irelia taken off the table. Maybe something like Jinx uh, 
maybe even Kaiser, because I think there was some uh, some Kaiser being played on both sides. Might be on the target list here. Yeah, this 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 Camille being oh Jinx ban. I mean, yeah, they they I think I think the Caitlyn they're really playing for this bot side, right? They they already invested. Now this is already their second ban. The Chase being banned into Camille makes sense. It's like a questionable matchup, and it's a it's a, a yeah. quite prominent pick um, uh, from Phobos. Uh, the top laner for for uh, current call, so uh, I'm a little bit confused on the identity of of both sides. Like I'm, it's not quite sure what what either side is willing to do. Jaeger does seem to have some kind of idea here, having like three champions, both with pretty good pick potential. Um, mm -hmm. So they would probably need some mid laner in ADC that can actually follow up with this. I'm expecting them to pick ADC here and then uh, counter pick mid as a last pick as they see the whole draft develop. Um, but they might actually pick up the ADC. Oh, and the follow up is exactly what you can do with the Tristana, the rocket jumps and the resets. You got a lot of mobility in those fights if you actually get going. So I really like this pickup and it's answered immediately, not even thinking about it for more than a second. It's a Shen Lee Sin picked up as the final two for Curtain Call. I mean, this is this is really strong. I mean, they, you, you saw them, they picked that Shen. I mean, we've uh, I have seen him play it. And it's, I mean, anyone that plays Camille knows that Shen is just like some monster. It's actually worse than Jax. It's it's like yeah. not fun to fight. Lee Sin, obviously just strong AD jungler right now. Uh, has good setup with the Victor. Syndra being picked up. I think Syndra has a good pick here. I don't think there's uh, much else to like pick. Maybe actually Lux could have been picked. I don't know if they played or if it was the other team. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, it was Kurt and Call oh, that yeah. played Lux mid. Uh, no, I, I like I like actually both sides. This Syndra is, a, is a quite a good pickup. I think it's like one of the good last remaining uh, picks that maybe could have been substituted in Oriana. Uh, I, I like both sides of the draft actually a lot. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure uh, when we started out on the side of Jaeger with the Nautilus Camille, especially the Nautilus into a Caitlyn. Um... It's a little bit risky to do, but if you got the confidence, and especially with the Tristana, you got an ADC to back it up, uh, to back the engages up, and get a, lo a lot of uh, well high damage burst in, you can definitely play that lane. And Camille obviously scales fairly well, but of course you got to measure up against the Shen, right? But on the other side, curtain call, scaling is definitely a key word here for them but on top of that you got a caitlin leona lane that has a lot of early game agents uh, agency combine that with the lee sin you can do a lot of early game shenanigans in my opinion yeah i think i think this game might be decided very early on i think an important thing here for both bot laners is to decide on summoners whether to take a heal a cleanse or ignite and on who to put it I think it's going to be like really important for Caitlyn and Tessana both to have Exhaust and Nautilus Leona both to have Ignite. Um, yeah. I think um, going for a heal here is just not very smart. Um, and then having like Nautilus, Tessana, obviously early game and like mid game, they can still jump in, go really aggressive, like follow on the Spicks, like with the Vi, the Cinda, Shatter the Weak, Camille Ult, like they can follow up. And then once Tessana has those levels and gets the pass, gets her passive like high enough level, um, I think uh, she'll like have long enough range to just follow up from the range and doesn't have to risk her life. So actually, I really like Jaeger Bombs. Um, Jaeger Bombs, so close. Uh, Jaeger. Uh, like Jaeger's team comp looks very nice. Draft looks like very developed, and and actually like thought out. Um, whereas the side of um, Curtain Call seems to be more reliant on their own picks and counters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, overall, I mean, I like the comp. It's it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of like press forward and just kill them, right? You got the Vi old, you got the Camille jump in, Tristana follows up, and Syndra. I mean, you got the outplay button, right? What else do you need? But on the other hand, like, you need to find the right targets. If you can't get past the Leona, Shen, Lee, Sin, uh, if you can't get to the Victor and the Caitlyn, then you're in a little bit of trouble. And uh, especially if you fall behind early, you can just get out far uh, in the mid game already if uh, your Vi and your Camille just die instantly. Yeah, I, I think I think you bring up a good point here. Um, this Shen obviously brings a lot of appeal to the table for Victor and Caitlyn, as well as Lee Sin and Leona just being able to like protect Victor Caitlyn. Um, but I think overall, I would I would give the I would give the upper hand um, 
most likely uh, uh, not the curtain call, but the Jaeger. Um, mm. Just for the fact that even though they will definitely struggle in mid game if they're not ahead, once late game opens up and Sindar, Tistana, Camille, just like Syndron might not start like um, outscaling Victor, but Tistana, Camille outscale the rest very, very hard. Um, maybe Camille even even opting to go for a Triforce, like knowing what what our priority targets are. Um, mm. It's it's a uh, it's definitely an interesting thing to see. Also, build paths are going to be really interesting to see. Item changes happen to like a lot of Bruiser items. Yeah. Whether we even see a Starex this game um, might be a question to to wonder about. Both uh, Vile Sin, you know, like prominent item is a Starex second item. Same for Camille. Sterex second item has always been a must, and I wonder if people uh, are, are changing up their builds uh, starting from patch now. Might be, might be. I mean, I'm. I was expecting uh, slowly but surely some jungle meta changes to come in with the item rework, the Vi and the Lee Sin. I mean, Lee Sin is always is always good, kind of. Uh, but the Vi instead of a Shin Zhao, Shin Zhao or a Jarvan, it's a little bit of a uh, refreshing taste, so to say. But I kind of want to pass the question to you because uh, since you're especially uh, favorable towards the uh, the Jaeger draft so far. What does Kern Call have to do to get going in this game and to be able to win it? Well, they're gonna be, first of all, they're gonna have to play a phenomenal game. Obviously, Shen is gonna <laughs> like win top lane in in a in a isolation, uh, whereas Vi Lee Sin is a questionable matchup. I think before level three, Lee Sin wins that like every single time. But once level three hits, I think. He'll, both sides could win this and picking any other champion with it, like making it a 2v2 or 3 3 like in any lane, it's gonna be like completely based on, on like who hits which hook. Like if Nautilus hits a hook or Leona hits <laughs> her Zenith blades. Um mid lane is a very like it's like a like depends. I feel like they're just both gonna have to farm well and if they get solo killed, this this game is gonna go really fast. Um, mm. But I think the most uh, the most like best strategy for for curtain call to get ahead and maybe actually win this game before late game opens up is gonna be playing through this Caitlyn, playing through this long range before Syndra Tristan I like gain their own long range, um, and playing extremely safe. So they're gonna have to play extremely aggressive while staying safe. And my Caitlyn might opt to go cleanse, um, which I think would be a very big mistake if uh, she does end up going for something like a cleanse instead of ig uh, ignite or exhaust. Yeah, I definitely agree with you that the exhaust on the ADC, especially when you have a Camille, when you have a Tristana or a Vi just diving for you, you definitely need that extra defensive tool to reduce the incoming damage. But I'm I'm definitely curious how that early game is going to play out for Curtain Call, especially on the bot side and uh, translating that into the overall early objectives as well, right? We've got the we got the first Drake you can fight over, you got the first Herald that's usually one of the one of the uh, more intense points of the game at around eight to nine minutes and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good game i'm super excited for it it's the first game of the platinum league we're finally starting off the year in style properly with the first round curtain call gaming against jaeger we're loading into the rift ladies and gentlemen we're almost there okay, almost there us. good old spectator delay <laughs> yeah but some time you have to kill, right? Yeah, it's. I am. I am actually really curious to how this game will go. Um, depending on um, on what uh, what side they decide to play for. Obviously, Shen having that um, stand stand united, being able to actually come down to the to the bot lane before 14 minutes is going to be really prominent and definitely help them with securing this early lead. Um, seeing the Summoner spells choice actually really interesting. I I had not expected um, them to be like this. Well. Tristana opting for the cleanse and Caitlyn opting for the heal is um, is actually very interesting. Yeah, I'm a little bit. I'll be honest with you. I'm a little bit unsure about the cleanse on the Tristana. I mean, it makes sense against the against the Shen against the Leona, but then again, there is so much CC that can just be chained unless you perfectly cleanse and get to flash out or jump away. You're uh, you're in a little bit of a bad spot. But other than that, well, 
We'll see how it goes. No exhaust on the side will definitely be an interesting pickup. But either way, I think we're both ready. We're loaded into the rift and slowly but surely we can get this going, I think. That's going to yeah. be a good one. All right. All right, all right. Of course, special shout out as well to our sponsors who make this all possible. It's eSports Scrim, of course, Rogue Energy, and League Works. I'm really, really much appreciate, much appreciative that we have some support to get this stuff underway. But we're on the rift. It's game one between between Curtain Call and Jaeger. I'm starting yeah. off with what it seems uh, to be a five-point defense. Very classical. Yeah, very, very standard stuff. Nothing, nothing aggressive happening. Everyone taking their positions. Um, and we can take this time to maybe look at the runes. Um, Tops she's, uh, seems to be very standard. Just grass for both champions and seeing the TP ignite is like we see everyone on, on Camille. I don't think we've I've seen a Camille with flash for for quite some time now. Um, both junglers opting for Conqueror makes the most sense. And then seeing the first strike on Victor, I mean, I think it's like his best scaling rune, right? Like opting to get that early gold generation going, uh, get further ahead, get items faster, do more damage, get more gold, etc. And yeah. uh, end the cycle there. And then actually the Airy or Syndra, quite interesting. Uh, I don't think I've, I've seen that much. I feel like I've only seen Electrocute. Yeah, Ari on Syndra, I mean, you get a little bit more poke or mer more DPS in lane kind of thing. Um, I'm still, I'm, I'm uh, not sure either. I'm not a big Syndra player, so I can't comment too much on the depth of Electrocute versus Ari, but I can definitely see some of the advantages. What's going to be interesting to see is, of course, the new Glacial Augment on the Nautilus. But other than that, both junglers starting out red buff, so... Uh, a little bit of a slower start since Chad Ping Mew did not get a leash, but that Vi should still be able to uh, clear at a somewhat decent speed. If I did get a leash from Camille, she she started up with a Camille leash. Um, Camille showing up to lane late, uh, showed them where they are, and as well as Nautilus, uh, they know that uh, Caitlyn Leona ended up being in the lane late, so they know exactly where both junglers are starting. Oh, both opting to go different ways. Immediately making use of that level 2 spike. You already mentioned that Camille is going to have a hard time against the Shen, but Phobos is starting this lane off every anything but friendly against his opponent. But the mid lane seems to be very chill. Yeah, they they're they're very like uh, they're just like try like they're just trying to, to survive the laning phase, right? Just trying to farm better than the opponent, get your mana flop and stacks as fast as possible, survive laning phase. And get your base with Lost Chapter and, and just like start, like that's when the game starts, right? First base yeah. is, is when the game really starts. Except for bot lane, as we uh, do see Nautilus and Lona constantly looking for these potential engages. Uh, both trying to fight, knowing that both sides can actually win if they play properly. Of course, the Tistana with the Halo Blade, if she actually gets that full charge EE off, uh, will be a like, big, big amount of damage. Um, oh, there's the first gank, actually. Ryan going in with the ward jump. Doesn't connect the Q, so GG can just walk out of that one. Doesn't even have to flash. Unfortunate for the Lee Sin, but still good early gank. Up the momentum a little bit. Uh, yeah, Lee Sin opting to go for, for Red into his entire blue side. Trying to get a gank going in mid lane through a weird angle. Um, wasn't like I think Syndra was also not expecting it, so uh, it, it actually managed to work out. And now obviously Vi is ahead in tempo. Um, of course, Syndra having the base there definitely sucks, uh, but Vi will now uh, be ahead a little bit at far. Maybe getting earlier to this bot site, being able to gank earlier might uh, win them this bot site. Yeah, if uh, Chapping Mute actually manages to pull off a gank there, that would be pretty massive. Scuttle already in control. You got some good ward presence on the bot side of the map so far. 14 red, and that's definitely gonna help against these weird angles Lee Sin can take sometimes. But he's looking for a mid lane gang, yes, again. GG still doesn't have the flash. Scatter the weak nicely, dodged with the ward jump. This time the Sonic Wave connects, goes in deep for the dive, has to flash out. Luckily, he doesn't catch another turret shot, but I was a little bit over aggressive in my opinion. 
Yeah, that was very aggressive. Go opting to go for the regank on him uh, kind of makes sense, but actually he got spied, spot by Vi. Vi might be trying to look for him and get him low. Circle's actually around. That's a gank towards mid lane rolling in while we watch some trades in the top lane. And there is a, a gank connecting immediately. Shaping Newt forces the flash from Nadeshi. And that's both flashes for the mid laners down. So we might see junglers put up a tent there in the river for now. I mean, this is really, really massive um, for the side of Jaeger. Like getting both flashes from the enemy mid, uh, both um, summons from the enemy mid, getting this barrier down on this Victor will make it a lot easier um, to get like upcoming ganks afterwards. Um, so very happy to see that Vi saw that angle and just needed to go for, went for it instead of trying to find that Lee Sin and wasting time. Uh, was was very nice to see. Absolutely. Definitely the right calls being made and you kinda mentioned it you kinda mentioned it. Curtain call needs to put on a lot of early pressure and uh, to counteract that with a lot of pressure from your own side is definitely a great call by Jaeger, but it's it's actually the bot lane we were watching out for, right? We were we were kinda talking about the uh, uh, I was gonna say Camille, that's not the name. Uh, the Caitlyn Leona bot lane. And look at that Trey Lumi. Able to get a good chunk of damage in. I'm still waiting for the uh, proper fights on that bot lane. Yeah, it seems like both supports might be tr like more like guessing and trying to make the other people try to go in, uh, but not opting to actually go in as Tasana just walks back to get some honey fruits, trying to win out on a trade. Definitely uh, Lumi playing very well, getting the QE and getting both autos. Uh, must feel really nice to hit. Yeah. Another Chen, uh, Phobos actually hit level 6. We got Ryan walking in for a gank. Be careful with Camille already having hit level 6. He doesn't have the uh, Dragon's Rage ready quite yet, but still manages to force Crispy out of lane. So a good chunk of pressure, but for the moment, Lee Sin, not too much impact. He's trying his best. Gets a few ganks in, but the follow-up not quite there from his team so far. And this is this is where Curtain Call's like biggest uh, strength is, right? The, once uh, Shen hits level six, which was just now, the Stan Unitas is available. Um, any fight that will break out will, will definitely give them a small lead. Um, yeah. It's actually not a Sistana. They don't know they're here. Oh, they're trying to freeze the lane a little bit, or at least slow push. And if Brain Dead gets a nice drop on them. It would be interesting, but for now they decide to walk out of the brush. But top side, that's where the action is. Up safe haven is up for a second. It takes away some of the damage, but Phobos has to flash. Has not enough energy for the taunt, if I'm correct, for another moment. There's the next Vault Breaker. The next auto attack might connect, but they don't have the damage either. Eight minutes in, lots of ganks, no kills. Yeah, there's a lot of action happening, happening everywhere. Actually, everyone trying to get something done. Uh, just Ryan going for the dragon now. So seeing the vine was top, uh, just decides to take this uh, dragon. Having bot push is uh, very easy. Actually, Syndra being like pushing in this Victor really deep. Yeah, pops the old to kind of try and force Nadeshi out of the lane. Still barrier traded. It's something, I guess, but overall not really changing anything about the situation. The victor is gonna stay, gets to clear with his ult, and from there on out, it's really just back to more farming, because uh, that's what Victor wants to do, right? He needs his upgrades on the spells, you need that 100 CS, or a little bit less and a kill, but for the moment, not much happening. I do like the uh, reply with the early Drake pickup in response to the topside gank, though. Yeah, they replied very fast. That was uh, very nice to see that they, they saw the fight top lane. They were like, okay, you will oh. die from this, but we can definitely get something done. Interesting ult right there. The assault battery does connect, but Crispy completely on the other side of the lane. Can't even follow that one up. So that's a big engage tool for the Vi on a uh, major cooldown, I just call it for the moment. Yeah, I think there might have been some miscommunication, not knowing uh, maybe uh, uh, Crispy's uh, hookshot was not available, maybe just not in the right position to follow up. Uh, Probe was definitely getting a lot of attention for the weak side champion, um, so he's very happy to soak that up and actually survive through all of it, surviving through Ignite, and still having the stand united for any upcoming fight. 
Mm. It's gonna be really decisive. Once once fights are playing out, Camille ever tries to walk back or like leave lane, any fight that breaks out will just instantly be put into Shen's team's favor. Uh, can someone, by the way, tell Phobos that you can actually upgrade items? Uh, that might help him. I'm looking at his, at his inventory here. But jokes, jokes aside, I'm super surprised by the pace of this game so far. Phobos going in for a decent trade once again, but other than that, not too much happening all over the map. The first dragon was taken. Herald is up available, but no one seems to be interested in that one. So we're kind of waiting for the uh, second ocean drake to c come up. And by now, we're kind of getting past that that early game stage, right? We we kind of expected the Leona Caitlyn to make an impact, but they didn't. And you mentioned Camille is going to start scaling, Syndra is going to be better and better when she picks up items, and so is Tristana, and from here on out, it's only going to get harder for Curtain Call, right? What do, they, what do they need to do next to keep themselves in this game? I mean, it's really important they actually get some kills on someone. Like, right now they have a CS lead uh, everywhere except top lane, uh, which is to be expected. Like, top lane got like three ganks in a row, and even though Phobos survived every single one of them, it, it's, it's like he, he will fall behind in CS. Um, but every other lane has actually oh. been head in CS, head in farm. Speaking about kills, the Chaos Storm coming in, Chapping Newt has to flash out, but once again, good uh, good aggressive moves by just Ryan here. I, it, I, think, I think it's really like it's really nice that they're trying to go for these plays, but just the fact that the enemy keeps surviving barely on 1 HP makes it perfect, because as long as they survive, they're winning. All, all that Jaeger has to do is just survive early game, survive mid game, get to that late game, get some items on your champions, get Syndra level uh, 11, and then you're done. Yep. Well, there's, there's a little bit of fighting on the bot lane. Jakapa going in with the Zenith Blade, actually the Ignite, and that's a deep engage by the Tristana. Kias goes hard, the Ace in the hole is blocked by his support, but still, that Zenith Blade actually follows up after the Fletch. Dredge line back into the turret, they'll be fine for the moment. Fowas actually joining in with the Stand United, but other than that, not much comes of it. But here comes GG, comes in with the Scatter the Weak, tries to connect the damage first, but finally goes over to Jaeger. But they are gonna be traded back because just Ryan shows up in the bot lane. Beautiful Dragon's Rage to pick up the kill on the support. But once again, GG still there with the Syndra. Still dangerous. Doesn't pick up anything else after that. In the meantime, Nadeshi can uh, reply a little bit with push in the mid lane. And overall, it's a one for one. That's the action we were expecting, finally. Yeah, I mean, Leona finds a really nice engage on uh, Tristana. Uh, trying to get her to, to pop the cleanse, but instead Tristana just jumps in on uh, Caitlyn that immediately got altered by uh, Nautilus, then gets bolted I think mid-air by the uh, solar flare and actually perfectly cleanses it and uh, gets through it completely. It gets a lot of damage down on Lume, but uh, the exhaust just blocked too much having to jump out. Then it was very nice to see that Brain Dead stopped the ace in the hole. Uh, but you you saw the stand united just like blocked so much damage uh, from the Tristana yeah. plus the exhaust, really showing like the summoner advantage plus the ultimate advantage. Um, nice like afterwards having a really nice scatter of the week from Tristana uh, from Syndra, plus a uh, vault breaker plus uh, ultimate from Vi, really like following back up and not scared to go too far in. Um, yeah. And then it's as you said a very nice like last second dragon kick to. Kick Syndra into this uh, into this um, one HP Nautilus and getting the last pick uh, just to make yeah. sure it's an even trade. Yeah, man, it seemed to have uh, kind of flipped a switch here for the moment because suddenly bot lanes are roaming, supports are roaming, and kind of unlocked the map, so more or, more or less to say. Because suddenly everyone is going for vision control around the Drake pit. Uh, actually, curtain call trying to pick up that second Drake. That Ocean Drake will come in handy with a little bit of uh, region. But other than that, of course, it opens up the next dragon. It's gonna up, open up Soul Point in a little bit. And Phobos, nice flash out of the hook shot. There's the uh, ultimatum under the tower coming in, but that Chen is really tanky. Last second, Syndra damage does connect, so it's a kill picked up. But in the bot lane, Curtain Call is already trying to reply to this top lane play with the turret on their own. Yeah, um, really nice play map play. 
they 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 make sure that Probus has to use the flash to dodge the hook shot so that uh, GG gets a nice easy scatter of the week, gets the stun, just completely goes for it, hits it, and yeah, they, they get that pill and tower. First tower of the game, really nice plate. Yep, first tower of the game goes down. Gold is evened out, more or less, so that's a little bit of a comeback, so to say. But still, of course, kills are evened out, and you... We kind of talked about it earlier, right? Uh, Curtain Call needs to get the kills on the right people to try and stay into in this game and actually try and start winning this one. But so far, you got one two kill on the Caitlyn, that's nice and all, but you don't have, don't have anything on the Victor, and you have two kills on the Syndra on the other side. Yeah, Victor not getting his upgraded spells yet is, is like, not good. Right now, only having Q increased is just not quite enough. He needs to get at least two down, like, before 20 minutes, or this is gonna be a really rough game uh, once, like, team fighting happens at, like, next Drake. Uh, so, I, I am... I, I will, it will be very important to see if they can actually try and fight around this Victor. Uh, right now, of course, Mythic being picked up. We see two Defiant Sunderers and Ludens being picked up for, for Syndra. Uh, actually, Tistana not having base yet, sitting on a lot of gold. Um, knowing that she she couldn't base with tempo, actually decided to pick up the wave in mid lane. Very nice to see that they uh, actually are opting to um, get all the gold instead of uh, staying up in tempo, knowing that there's nothing for anyone to take. Harold was down, Drake was down, so they actually decided to uh, take things slow, and they they seem to be working out for them right now. Absolutely. I mean, you got you kind of got to do some stuff while the objectives are down, and uh, picking up uh, picking up vision, picking up minions is about as much as you can do in most cases. But actually, curtain call finding some opportunities here. Nice war kick back on to chat ping mute. The collapse on the buy is happening. Flash exhaust to follow up, and it's finally a kill picked up by just Ryan. But once again, it's a kill on the Lee Sin. That's not the character you wanted on. Yeah, like Lee Sin getting these skills, it's 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 nice, but like once the second item has been bought, it doesn't matter what he gets. Everything is just like adding to his survivability by a tiny bit, just one more auto attack or just one one more like Syndra spell, and, and he's dead anyways. So I, I, it's really sad that these these uh, kills are just going to the wrong people. They need to get these Victor assists. They need to give give him some stacks because. If like right now he's just so far behind in in in, uh, in stacks in terms of like Syndra, you know Syndra being at level yeah. 11, two levels away from second uh, ability upgrade, it was it's gonna start hurting a lot. Absolutely. Well, at least the, they are kind of ca they are capitalizing on the pick on the Vi. They're taking that second herald. So the uh, the focus on macro play on map objectives definitely being rewarded here a little bit for curtain call. It's nice to see, but the question is, what are they going to do with that second Herald? You already took both tier one in bot and mid lane, so you can either use it as a reply for a dragon setup, kind of force some attention away from that Drake pit uh, shuffle, so to say, or you try to take that tier one in the top side. Chapping you a little bit aggressive. There's a solar flare going down. Chaos Storm to follow up. That's an easy pickup with the uh, with the uh, Jaeger jungler. Being a little bit too aggressive right there. That's a kill on the Caitlyn. Finally, the gold on the right people and an assist for the victor. This stacks we just talked about. Yeah, this is like very nice to see. Um, exactly, the assist on victor is actually might even be more important than the kill going to Caitlyn. Uh, just making sure that he gets those extra 25 stacks. Uh, actually, managed to steal an extra little bit of gold there. Um, right yeah. at the last second from GG. Um, yeah, and... and it's right now it's gonna become like very dangerous two items are becoming very close Sinja, uh i think less than a thousand gold away from a second item looking yeah. to be uh, uh the shadow flame oh just ryan there's a flash kick he is going for some place tp coming in for support for jaeger but it's gonna be the camille very very late get of the week finds her kappa though and that's leona way out of position easy pick up here to find the response kill but of course, you can close that Dragon Pit off with all the Caitlyn traps. Still, that's a lot of CC down for Curtain Call. And for the moment, Jaeger not looking to enter the pit. No, they would have to walk around it, but actually, uh, Jaeger not starting it up yet. Uh, you would expect them that the moment they see them walk away, they just start it up. Um, 
but I did get some good poke out. Victor, Caitlyn, both hitting their abilities. Um, actually, people walking away from it, giving up this third dragon. Yeah, interesting call uh, to kind of not go for it after you traded support for support, basically. Maybe they're just worried that they can't really find the engage without their uh, without their Nautilus. Crispy back to the top lane to reply. Phobos pushing on the side lane. It's a little bit of a uh, equal trade still almost, even though no mythic items uh, items on the Shen yet. Still that CS deficit in favor of Crispy, but overall, Curtain Call looking pretty good. Soul Point, Hextech Soul on top of that, but I kind of want to bring it back to the items, especially the mid laners items you just mentioned. And Victor building Crown of the Shattered Queen, kind of going for a more defensive approach. I usually prefer to see the, the Ludens with the offensive power on the team fights, but for the moment, Nadeshi, Kind of looking to play the the slower long game. How are you feeling about that? Well, I think as well that the Ludens would have been a better pickup, especially since most of their damage will come from Victor Caitlyn. Obviously, Lee Sin will definitely help, especially since he's already a little bit ahead. But Victor being solo AP, I feel like not picking up Ludens is just like such a waste. As like what do you see? Maybe a little bit of skirmish around this Herald. Uh, maybe you at least want to run into the turret. A little bit unfortunate, of course, that you can't really follow it up here at all. So, more or less almost wasted, I'd call that, Herald. But still, you got a third Drake in the books. You're kind of just looking to scramble some more gold for the moment and wait for that Hextech Soul to come in uh, in the next three minutes because that would be a massive pickup for Curtain Call. And for the moment, Phobos. Tries to put some pressure on Crispy and Ryan is here as well. Another ward jump kick. He has been so on point with these the whole game. It's gonna be rewarded with an easy kill on Crispy. And slowly but surely, Curtain Call moving further and further ahead in this game. Yeah, Curtain Call. I, I think I think where it started falling apart is giving that third dragon is just so dangerous, right? Because right now they're getting ahead. If they had at least taken a dragon, you know that you can at least survive for 10 more minutes. Like without soul, it's or like without a Baron buff, it's gonna be very hard for Kunin Call to actually close out this game. Uh, all they have for pushing power is this Caitlyn. Shen is not a very good split pusher, not having this like uh, split side like Titanic Hydra way to like push lanes. Um, they, 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 they can't they can't go too aggressive and they're also not really good at defending these sieges so giving them like a hextech uh, Drake like as their soul is just so dangerous you can't give that up so I'm actually really surprised that um, Jaeger decided not to fight the third dragon because now they ha are forced into a fight at this fourth one and I mean doing so would just like you you can't push them off like there's no way that um, curtain call will not fight this fourth dragon of course like being able to Absolutely. get soul is so easy. Whereas last fight, they could have actually maybe still pushed them off. And right now, they're, they they force themselves into like a timer. And once the timer like runs out, they're they're forced into this team fight. And if they're down in items, so then they're down on items. So I'm really surprised if, if they manage to, to to close this out like at the upcoming dragon fight. They're gonna have to have to need to hit some really good picks and then dodge this Lee Sin Q. Yeah, the Lee Sin is going to be big and uh, certainly that next dragon is going to be an intense fight. You could maybe even look to kind of maybe trade a Baron once the, while the other team goes for a dragon, uh, go for some risky plays. But overall, definitely, definitely a dangerous position because you're forced into that dragon fight and they are already more or less almost 2k gold behind. That's not that much, quite honestly, but it's still a deficit that you have and that you need to balance out. So we'll have our eyes on the Tristana, on the Syndra especially, to see if uh, Curtain Call can win that fight or if Jaeger is going to slowly but surely claw their way back to the game. Yeah, like actually the side of uh, Syndra, very close to, to the Shadow Flame, needs to get it, like looking to base right now for it. If she has it for this upcoming fight, yeah. yeah. She has two items. I mean, she and, and Caitlyn, uh, together with Lee Sin, I think, are the only one with two items for this upcoming dragon fight. And they have to fight for it, so I, I'm, I'm interested to see how they how they plan to like take this. So will they actually try to, to use their comp properly and, and look for these picks? Because right now, I mean, Lee Sin has just been doing what their comp, the enemy comp is supposed to do. This is a one-man army, just finds all these picks with these dragon-like flash kicks. 
Yeah, just Ryan has been instrumental to kind of pulling out all these picks. I think most of the kills going over to Curtain Call were off of the kick, but now there's Ryan walking right into a trap. That's a lot of bursts on the Lee Sin. Victor caught up in the CC as well, and the fight is on. Chapter New has to flash out the case, and the hole comes in from the back line. And watch for Lumi because he is going to be the big carry. First kill goes over, but the massive scatter the weak. GG pulling out the place. This Syndra was going to be the MVP, and they clean house it's an ace for jaeger they completely steamroll the fight yeah i mean this is exactly what they needed they they find this they they find this like kind of setup and then uh gg being very very patient with her abilities actually managing to go for this like scatter of the weak hitting i think three members there and everyone she needed to hit of course just ryan being completely cc to death uh stuck forced to use the stopwatch and just not enough survivability. Um, you know, the Starex nerf definitely showing um, that would have been a lot bigger, a lot bigger shield during during like previous patches. Um, so very nice to see GG now 4-0, two items, having about 2,000 gold in her pocket, being able to like maybe go towards a death cap already. It could be a decision, maybe get a blighted jewel going for a void staff and just getting all the burst that she can. Absolutely. That Syndra is going to become even bigger. 404 at the moment. Counterplay not found. And from there on out, well, Baron might be the next uh, thing for Jaeger to look at. They kind of blew the gold lead the curtain call had out of the water. Kind of flipped that over to almost a 2k gold lead on their own. So definitely going to be more in, more and more interesting to watch. But it's, of course, still a big thing for Lumi to get into those fights, to get the damage off, because that Caitlyn is still really, really dangerous on those two items. So it's not it's not home free and uh, win this for Jaeger, but they're getting closer to it, especially with the scaling that you spoke about in the uh, Champ Select already. Yeah, both both the scaling definitely is showing its effect. Like it's gonna like really become prevalent like soon. And another big thing is that even though the gold might be even, a lot of that gold is on this Lee Sin, and that's just not where you need it. Whereas on the side of uh, Jaeger, all of the gold is on exactly who you want it. Of course, yeah. one kill going off the Nautilus is not the most important thing. But Vi hits this like hits this two item spike right as Baron is like able to be taken. The Syndra having TP and a blue buff to maybe join the fight. Um, and then Tristana and, and Syndra having all, all of the rest of the kills. Yeah, I'm actually Jaeger trying to sneak the Baron here for the moment, but they get spotted out, cancelled immediately. It was a risky play, but you, that's the stuff you can get definitely go for if you're aware that the enemy doesn't have any vision on you. And could have been an uh, interesting turn to kind of try and pick off uh, Jakapa on the attempt to get some vision down, but. For the moment, we'll sit back, we'll chill a bit, we'll go shopping. Got a Void Staff picked up for GG. So yeah, that's this, massive. This, yeah, like, he had 2000 gold at the end of the last team fight, buying Blighted Jewel, Blasting Wand. That's only 600 gold needed for the Void Staff, you know? Void Staff, a lot cheaper um, than it used to be, like, the previous seasons. Definitely a very scary Syndra right now. That's, this is, uh, there's a lot of magic penetration on this champion. I think it yep. would be like 45 to 34, 35, yeah, yeah, 45 to 34. That's, like, I mean, uh, anyone um, below 80 magic resistance will just start taking true damage from her. So it's going to be very yeah. scary to see how this uh, upcoming Dragon or Baron fight is going to go out. Uh, I'm a play-by-play -play caster, I'll uh, keep my hands off quick math. That's not not my forte, but... Uh, <laughs> You, you definitely have a good point. This Syndra is going to do a lot of damage, but I'm, I'm still looking at Curtain Call and once again asking myself, okay, what's next? What do you do? What do you do against a Syndra that's on three items, a Tristana that is working on the third item? It's going to be packing. Uh, I don't even know what this is going to be. Uh, some attack speed, maybe an Infinity Edge, but still, what are you, what are you going to do? I mean, first point would obviously we pick up the Hextech Soul, right? Actually, Jakapa goes for the Solar Flare. Follow up Flash with the Leona, tries to get the damage in, and Crispy completely caught out and all by themselves. Gonna be taken down. Brain Dead Sub is gonna be chased down. Sonic Wave lands. Second kill. And just like that, that's the stuff Curtain Call needs. Game yeah, yeah. my questions. I think actually 
maybe they find these two kills, definitely helping a lot. But again, another kill going to Lee Sin, obviously the other one going to Caitlyn, very important. But hey, the, the side of Jaeger actually picking up this t tier 2 meat, this will make it very difficult. If they actually get a good push mid lane, if they don't start a dragon right now, get this push mid lane hard, they will get a very favorous like uh, adv advantage like at the upcoming dragon fight. Being able to set up better, being able to set up against the Caitlyn, very important, obviously. Caitlyn not being able to set up is going to definitely hurt you a lot in these fights. Absolutely, but they are in the pit now. They have the vision advantage. Beautiful flash taunt here by Phobos. Trying to connect on the jungle. If the Vi gets taken down, that is massive because you can't contest without a smite. And the Shen is still going for it. Obviously, he can be away on the side lanes. He has to scatter the weak, but here comes GG with the gameplay button. Doesn't fight the kill on Lumi thanks to the shields, but that's the stand United traded out. That's a massive ultimate that is off the table. And for now, well, it's gonna be the question, can you contest this Hextech Drake? Because it is gonna be the Hextech Soul for Curtain Call, and it's just like that going over, and that's a big step back into the game. Yeah, this is this is definitely bringing it back in the game. Getting this kill on this Caitlyn, um, very surprised to actually see Nadeke, Nadeke like, jumping that far forward, flashing, trying to get the W on top of the Vi, getting stunned, maybe picking off that kill. Obviously very important if you can kill this Vi before the dragon fight starts, they could definitely get it for free. Not eventually, not needed. Trade two flashes for, for one flash. Um, but they pick up the Hextech Soul and, and again, very surprised that um, I think Jaeger might think that, they're, that their enemy is slower at it than, than they are, or they're just not quite like like mathematically it like pro correctly they're just not they're never there on time and uh, it, it's definitely gonna bite them in the butt now that this soul has been picked up two items on everyone uh three items showing slowly on this uh caitlin as she is building towards either infinity edge or bloodthirster definitely expecting the infinity edge it's, it's gonna be a very dangerous dragon and baron fight Absolutely, but it definitely feels like a lack of confidence in uh, from Jaeger's side, right? It almost seems like they are not quite sure of their own strength. They have this massive Syndra, they have a Tristana with almost three items that's gonna chunk through people, so you can definitely go and take those fights, but for the moment they aren't, and that's kind of what you mentioned, it's gonna bite them in the butt. Yeah, it's 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 really sad to see that they're not uh, able to like confidently go for these fights, because right now, even though they might outskill them at like three, four items, they're not being picked up yet. And uh, actually, nice to see that, uh, uh, as I predicted, the, the the change from Sterex to Death Dance. Um, Sterex obviously taking that huge nerf. Uh, seeing uh, Lee Sin still going for it, obviously having those total AD ratios, whereas uh, Vi has more. Uh, bonus AD ratios. Definitely going for these um, death dance makes a lot of sense. Going for this more defensive playstyle. Um, but now, now we see IE on Tristana. Betting to see it on uh, uh, Caitlyn soon as well. Two on a call the way. Will start uh, becoming very, very scary. Yeah, but who's also so but truly becoming scary is uh, Nadeche on the uh, Victor because that's a Shadow Flame already in the inventory. He's working on, well, he has some anti-heal, he has 2k gold in his pockets, uh, 1.5 on the Caitlyn, so... Next fight, three items spike, <laughs> almost a complete Rabadons for GG, by the way, oh my god. Yeah, that Syndra is gonna be so damn deadly for the rest of the game. You definitely don't want to get the, in the way of her. Yeah, I wonder if the side of uh, Jaeger wants to try and, and uh, prolong this fight, actually go for this death cap. Only a thousand gold away on Syndra. If they get it, this team fight is. I mean, they should win it. If they get a death cap on the Syndra, I feel like they should win it. But hand feeling this Syndra, a thousand gold will, will take at least like three minutes. Uh, I wonder if they can prolong the fight this long, if they're gonna look for it themselves. You see Syndra taking the bottom jungle, knowing that she needs to get this death cap as soon as possible. Having teleport if needed for the Baron fight being started up. Yeah, Baron is started off, but it. It seems like Jaeger isn't really fully aware that this is actually happening. Baron already down to half and you got still Camille in the bot lane. There's the team sl slowly coming in, but Nadeshi can zone with this Victor quite a lot. There's the turn, Solar Flare goes down and Crispy goes in for the fight. Ryan connects on the back line, kicks Vivai out and immediately the kill goes over to Lumi. That's the first pickup for the Caitlyn, but GG still in the middle of it. Beautiful flash forward with the scatter of the week. Can connect and take out the ADC, but in the end it's gonna be Curtain Call who rolled the fight. 
That Tristana almost got away, oh my god. That was a cheeky little bee backboard, but it did not work out in the end. And even though GG had some massive damage, Nadeshu was able to carry this. Yeah, you see you see that cave in line, that was that was the problem there. They weren't able to actually fully commit Vic, both Victor and Caitlyn standing behind there. Caitlyn only one second like walked a little bit too far by being able to ult behind them, go through the traps, not giving a single uh, like shit about the world and just going in, um, finding the vault breaker on top of the Caitlyn getting the kill, but it's just not worth it, together with the Syndra having to walk that far forward, having to flash forward away from the Leona into the enemy team, and she just got one shot. They have to play for this Syndra, and, and I feel like they didn't. They, they let Syndra just like get stunned up the entire team fight, and it showed that they just was, were lacking the damage that, that like killed the champions, that they got a stun up, got, got all these stuns with the Leona, with the Syndra, and the Camille, and they just didn't get anything from it because Syndra was stuck in the backline. But now having this death cap completed, even though they lost their last fight, they gotta give a thousand gold to this victor with the shutdown on Syndra. They can definitely still win, still four items on the Syndra with a death cap, very dangerous. Yeah, the fights are gonna continue on and to be fair, Baron even di didn't even get taken. Elder Drake is gonna be up in 50 seconds as well and that is quite honestly probably the uh, more interesting objective to pick up here. And the big question is, are people even gonna go for uh, maybe a trade? We have Crispy in the bot side of the map, trying to clear a little bit of the jungle, doesn't have TP, so he'll be very, very late for this Baron being started up already, so... A little bit of a tough spot here for Jaeger. They need to find the entrance into the pit, but look at this line of Caitlyn traps. There's no way he can break through that. And maybe even a fl just a flip by Chapping Mute over the wall is gonna be it. There he goes in, doesn't get the smite. Baron goes over to Curtain Call. Immediate pick picked up on the buy. And Jakapa is in the middle of the carries. But for the moment, they'll pull back. Baron, uncontested, goes to Curtain Call, and they are straight on to Elder Drake. Yeah, very nice. They just go for it. Uh, Camille being in the Q set all the way down and actually saw her with the uh, Scattle Crab being taken. And now they just set their sights on the other dragon. This is, I mean, this this game seems to be com in complete control of Curtain Call. Absolutely complete control, quite indeed. Jaeger are trying to trade a little bit back. They already cleared the tier 2 mid turret, and with that Tristana, they can shred through turrets and at least they crack the base. But still, now you're looking at a Baron up, Elder Draked up, Curtain Call, a lineup that is going to roll down your mid lane and bring pain to your base. And don't forget the Hextech Dragon Soul. I mean, yeah, that as well. <laughs> Still part of it. Caitlyn critting a minion for 1600 damage always feels nice. It does. Look at that Victor poke. That's so dirty, disgusting. What are you even gonna do against that? Got a nice wave rolling in on the tier 2 on the bot side. That's gonna be the first to fall, and after that, we'll move on to either the inhibitor or even the mid lane. Wave management, a little bit. It's uh, out of place here at the moment for Curtain Call, but quite honestly, they don't need that to win the game. They can just roll on bot lane and take this whole fight to the base. Yeah, yeah. like you said, having all these buffs being this Oh, actually, that's the flash taunt. Sorry to interrupt you, but Phobos is going in for the place, and that Syndra is going nowhere. Beautiful follow-up by Lumi. Easy kill picked up, and with the massive carry on Jaeger taken out of the equation, this is going to be an easy pickup. Lumi in the back line gets engaged on, but the Elder Drake is going to execute the vibe before anything happens. It's a double kill for the Kale. Kate, make that a third kill. For just Ryan, that Lee Sin, still not done. Triple kill in the end for the ADC. The Nexus down. Jaeger on the floor in curtain call. Take game one. Very, very well played. That was a beautiful showing. We kind of had our doubts uh, from the draft on out if they could survive into the later stages of the game, but quite honestly. Just the sheer focus they had on objectives, on the dragons, on the Baron, on the Elder Dragon that they got in the end, that definitely helped them pull uh, out the win here. Yeah, this uh, it was very nice. Actually, I was indeed, like you said, I definitely had my doubts about the draft. Um, you know, picking something like this that has to get ahead early and, and keep going ahead, not having a lot of scaling, really putting all your trust in the victor, and then this victor going crown instead of something aggressive like Ludens. Definitely questionable. 
Um, but they, they, they actually started to get kills on the right people. And they had yeah. that one really good fight at Baron Pit, even though they didn't get the Baron straight away from it. Um, definitely like showed that they had what it take, uh, took to like win this fight. They, they actually had this team coordination to, to shut down the Syndra from far away with Leona just babysitting her face, not being able to move. It's very nice to see. They, they played it as they should, and they, yeah, they, they took the win with it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be interesting to see how this one moves on, especially Phobos and the Shen. It's going to be an interesting uh, one to watch. Maybe that actually gets banned out in the draft. But we'll take a quick break. We'll uh, take a little bit of a five-minute breather, get some water, and uh, you guys can do the same. A little bit of warning here. We have an ad coming up that uh, has a lot of flashy images. So uh, if you are sensi sensitive to that stuff, uh, this might be a good moment to uh, kind of look away. But other than that, we'll be right back. Take care. Until then, and we'll see you in a few. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Phoenix League. Sponsored by Leakworks, Rogue Energy and Esports Grim. It's the first day of the Platinum League Group A. And we got Curtain Call against Jaeger Esports matching up. And currently, Curtain Call leading 1-0 in this best of three. So we're getting closer and closer to the end of the series. I'm Lithy. With me is Quill. And we're looking at another hype game. We kind of talked yeah. about it uh, off off uh, off stream already just now. What, what are you expecting of this next draft? Are you are we expecting some changes, some new things coming in? I'm really really hoping that Curtain Call um, sticks with a similar plan. They they play through the jungle, really make their jungler um, um, like decide where to go, like make the jungler just like make this tempo and. Um... Let their let their mid and, and bot lane do the damage uh, once they're needed. Like get these skills going slowly and don't overextend, but like take what what you need, like what you can. Like Lee Sin picking up the dragon at the start, and mm. so that way they got every single dragon for free, kind of like uncontested. Um, yeah, we'll see if there are some changes made to the whole thing. We got a little bit of a side swap going on, but other than that, Viego Corky already sitting on the bench again. So not much of a change here for the moment. No, I wonder if, if we're going to actually see. Maybe Soraka will make it through. Uh, definitely would uh, uh, mm. help the side of, uh, of uh, uh, I think, Curtain Call, right? Uh, the Soraka player. Yeah. Maybe some champions will make it through. And Never mind, that, he's gone. It, Banana Lady is gone. Uh, I would I would be surprised if uh, we see Lee Sin go through. I, I, I might expect them to think, yeah, let's not let that Lee Sin. Uh, oh, that's the Shen then. Through. Shen being banned. I think this is a good call. Uh, makes you be able to blind pick this uh, Camille a bit, a bit easier. And actually mm. the exact same opening with uh, Caitlyn. Just mirroring yeah. the side. Caitlyn is swapped over f to the other team. Still on the same side. I mean, she looks better in blue, I'll be very honest with you. But uh, that kind of leads to the question for me. What are they going to pair it up as a support with? I think... Uh, I think support-wise, there's a lot of Nautilus Blitzcrank Thresh that's going to be played. And on the other side, Curtain Call. Whoa, that's a quick one too with Victor and Jinx, two of the strongest picks in the game currently, in their pocket. I think uh, I think we got the whole crew here, right? We need to pick the Heimerdinger and Echo and then we're done. Like, oh, Arcane is here. Lux, okay. Yeah, Lux actually making it through. I think she made it through last time as well, but now indeed Lux being picked up with this Caitlyn. Uh, I hope that they're able to like uh, get something done with it. It's it's both their like one of their more main champions, so I would like to see it. Actually, yeah, Janna uh, didn't make it through last time. Janna was the replacement on the Shen, and actually they just pick it up with Jinx. Yep, that's gonna be interesting. So some uh, some interesting changes here on game two. But I also like the Jin Zhao picked up here for the second game from Rie Jaeger, because the Vi. I like the I like the idea of having just another character just go ham on the backline carries, but it didn't really work out, and I still think Jin Zhao can offer a little bit more to the whole package. Curtain Call on the other side, well, they are banning out the Syndra because they really did not like that last game. No, banning out the Syndra makes sense here, and yeah, I was about to say, right now, Jake Esports is going to be able to ban these junglers away. Twisted Fate still not making through. I think both teams know that this Twisted Fate is not something you can just easily let through draft ever. 
I'm surprised to not see it picked up in any of the first three. And also we need to keep in mind that this, even though Lux, Caitlyn, obviously, very strong pairing, um, but this Lux is being played in mid lane a lot as well um, mm -hmm. by GG, so I would not be surprised to, to see that flex to mid lane, especially since right now it's eating bands, so uh, nice wasted bands. And we see similar bands at the second phase, like of course Syndra being replaced. So what they, what they are trying to look, pick up here, most likely a jungler and then save their top lane for a counter pick. Or actually pick up a Gragas, okay. which might be a top lane, might be jungle. This, this is like actually a, a good uh, a good flex pick, unless they're Giga Brain and this is a Janna top with Smite and this Gragas is support, of course, that would be oh also God. funny to see. I mean, or you just put the Gragas in the jungle and pick Thresh for the Jinx, which also would work really well, but... Then you're still kind of, China, I'm... I'm lane. but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I like I like talking about it because it's actually a really interesting pick. But seeing Camille being picked I hate up, then it. it actually it's impossible. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, if Camille is is locked in here, uh, you can't uh, you can't pick Janet up into Camille. She takes towers way too fast. Um, yep. Actually, Jax is a play champion, um, not by Crispy, but uh, by. Um, by Phobos, so maybe seeing the Shaxx into Camille now that the Shen has been picked away, maybe picking... counter picking into self with Shaxx could be very interesting. Speaking of Phobos, he plays a lot of Jace, and this time around Jace is not banned out, so we might actually see that one coming through, but I'm still... I was gonna say I'm still kind of convinced that this Gragas is not jungle because we just haven't seen Gragas be in the jungle any time recently, so yeah, well, there's the Jax. I have no idea where any of these are going. They could go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, in, in reality, we should see it all as triflex, right? Gragas can go support, Jax can go jungle, Janna can go top. But in reality, this, this Janna is, is just the support. Gragas is going to go jungle, Jax is going to go into this favorable matchup into Camille. Uh, yep. Lock Sereth is, I think, most certainly uh, um, a flex pick. I think they're just going to decide on where they go while they're picking their champions in the client. Um, uh, it's most it's most notably going to be Caitlyn Lux. I'm guessing. I think Sarah just does not quite do the same thing. Also, yeah. I think has a harder time into the Shana. Uh, maybe range might be a bit longer on this queue, but I think uh, overall, uh, Sarah has an easier time into Victor than going to some duo lane. Um, and... I actually really like both drafts right now compared to last time. Yeah, I mean, curtain call going for. Um... I almost want to say equal, almost equal, if not even better scaling. Uh, with the with the Jinx picked up for the bot lane and a Jax, because Jax is, well, it's a Jax. It's going to be a, an absolute monster in the late game once he gets some items. But until then, well, you have to hold up either against a Xinjiao in the jungle or a Camille on the top side. And uh, yeah, that's uh, going to be an interesting lane to focus on. But of course, Victor against Zareth in the mid lane. Uh, Victor has a little bit of a rougher time here, I'd say, just because the range advantage that Zerath brings to the table. But last time we already saw that uh, that uh, Victor, I'm blanking on the player name right now. For, sorry for that. On um, Nadeche has well plays a very safe lane. Yeah, he was playing very safe and only actually walked for it when when Ryan like was like letting him go do that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think the focus of, of both drafts, obviously, is for this bot lane. You know, Jinx, Janna, both very aggressive. The Jinx, obviously, has a bit more scaling than Caitlyn, whereas Lux has a bit more scaling than Janna. Uh, both, like, similar in damage, uh, starting from, like, uh, early game. But this, this, I think, I mean, the most explosive lane is definitely going to be the Shaxx Camille. Both champions really like to trade, have a lot of stuff going. Camille definitely taking a bit of a hit with the item change, I think, on Starax Gage. But as well, uh, having the Triforce buff potential or Divine Sunderer buff, like she lost his health, but she took out some damage. And Jax mm -hmm. has similar stuff, right? Jax being able to go Triforce uh, Bork again, uh, Blade of the Rune King, getting that uh, referred of a, a nerf they did like the two, almost two and a half years ago at this point, going back <laughs> from 10 to 12. I think, yeah, I think it's actually a redo from two and a half years ago, or maybe start of season 10. Uh, Jax will definitely be able to build Bork this game. Since Al Camille definitely built some uh, health, maybe seeing a Shadow Flame or, or another health item on Xerath, definitely there, there is some uh, current health damage to be done on Jax. And 
I think I think this Jax Gragas is actually going to be more impactful than than they look. They might look like a little bit of a, yeah, Gragas jungle is not that good anymore, and and Jax top hasn't has, doesn't get played a lot. I think this Gregor's Jax is going to wreak havoc in the backline. Actually getting, being able to get on top of people. Of course, everyone has their own stun. Caden has her E, Lux has her Q, and Zeref has his own E. But they, besides that, there, there's not a lot to get through. And it's not a like, it's not like something that a little bit of tenacity can't fix. Just just getting this Mercer, like Berserker's, no, Berserker's Griefs, Mercury, Mercury Treads, Mercury Treads, and just having your Legend Tenacity will definitely make him be able to uh, get through this game. Yeah, absolutely. Gragas, uh, just very notorious for being an absolute monster on the end gauge, and uh, yeah, you can you can pull off, pull off a lot of fancy plays with the exploding casks. And uh, Ryan is actually the one playing that one, so it is going into the jungle for curtain call. We already saw what Ryan can do on Lee Sin. That looked fantastic, and with Gragas in his hands. I don't think we'll see much of a difference there, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that. But you already mentioned the uh, Gragas Jax duo. Uh, it's a fairly decent 2v2 for the jungle top side, but in the early game, not as strong, I'd say. Do you still think we'll, uh, we'll see some action on the top side for Curtain Call, or might there be a little bit more focus towards the bot lane? Uh, I, think, I think there'll still be more focus uh, around the bot lane. Uh, that's definitely the the place to go, especially since I think Jax should be able to uh, outplay this this one v two, even uh, even against this since our Camille obviously very explosive, uh, like a lot of like CC and knock up, but uh, since Sao, most of the damage is blockable with Jaxi, same for Camille. I think Jax uh, should be able to survive this early game, if not just like maybe get some kills. Uh, mm. Seeing ignite uh, ignite TP happening again, also not a surprise. Might be a thing, definitely. But uh, we still also got to watch that Caitlyn Lux lane, right? Because it's a big, it's a big kind of sort of lane bully matchup on uh, on the bottom side there. And Jinx, Jenna, they're decent in the early game, I'd say, but they're definitely not fantastic. So there might be some issues uh, with the Kate Lux taking over, and if you if you can't really reply to that uh, in the shape of jungle pressure in any uh, shape. Or actually, Jaeger gets their jungler down to the bot side as well to kind of snowball that. You might run into trouble fairly quickly. Yeah, um, it, it it's really interesting. Um, both sides of the draft, like, it, it is really showing um, that they can change it up. Like, it's a complete different draft from last game, right? Like, yeah. you don't have this, like, strong pushing mid lane, and Marzareth might be able to push, but, like, if Wave start, like, walking to the side, it's a completely different story. Uh, Victor definitely has to push uh, starting, like, uh, level 9, starting to get these items. And again, it's going to be... Uh, I mean, it's uh, questionable, right? If Gragas might go AP here instead of tank, uh, I think a tank would be the better option. Mm. Being able to disrupt a bit better in the back line, but maybe it's going to be some some you know uh, uh, Brewster build or some like combination build, uh, Everfrost into tank or something like that. Uh, it, it's it's I'm kind of curious to what's going to happen. Um, will Victor be able to get some assist like earlier into the game? Last game it took a bit a bit long, but it ended up being fine. Uh, maybe if they get this uh, Victor accelerated early with the first strike and passive. Um, they might be able to just take away the game a lot faster than, than last time and not having to rely on, on the enemy team giving you drakes for free might definitely help. Yeah, drakes for free is a good point. Objectives have been a massive point last game. We saw a lot of that going the way of Curtain Call and I'm really curious if we'll see some adaptions from the side of Jaeger to kind of, uh, to kind of uh, even that out now that they are on blue side. We'll see, we'll see. Dragon's gonna be an interesting factor. The Herald, uh, the first one wasn't highly contested, but uh, did have a, a decent amount of impact. But other than that, not really something either team focused too much on. But we'll see if that changes now that they uh, that they sorted out the comps a little bit different at least. Yeah, I do think it's uh, gonna be a, more important to uh, 
like play for these heralds. Actually, like maybe uh, either Sin Zhao or uh, Gragas is like stealing one away. Obviously, with with Jackson and Zareth and Victor, these these heralds are like taken very fast. Uh, just putting a little bit of gold in, into their pocket, like getting that excess Patriot power, especially towards the top lane. I think is really important. Of course, mid lane getting the the tower gone is really important, but I think top lane is a bit more uh, crucial. Uh, Jax, Camille, both not being able to like take the enemy um, longer lines. Uh, so if one of these champions gets ahead, I feel it's like a very rough matchup for either side. Camille gets ahead, Jax can definitely block yep. some damage with E, but it's it's rough. But if Jax gets ahead, Camille is just a nightmare. And I think uh, we're we're ready to see what's going to happen with this game. Absolutely, we are on to the rift. We're finally through the spectator, de spectator delay and loaded on in. It is the second game in the best of three. A match point for Curtain Call and Jaeger. They need to claw this back to have any chance of winning this series. It looks like a five stack towards the mid lane. Gets spotted out by Nadeche, though, on the victor. So, uh, no invasion and against Fields Batman. Yeah, uh, definitely uh, uh, a, a, like a change from last time, right? Going for the complete save, five, uh, five line, five point safety. Uh, we see uh, a, a less interesting runes this time around. Um, not even seeing the lethal tempo on the jacks. Feel sad. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big uh, lethal tempo jacks fan, so not seeing yeah. that uh, uh, feels bad. Um, just seeing conquer and everyone. Lethal tempo actually this time on Caitlyn though, compared to the fleet footwork from last game. Knowing that they had to play a bit more safe, having play a bit more like around their spacing. But of course, Caitlyn now, uh, Jinx will have a similar and even longer range later in the game. Knowing that she can uh, not play with her range as much. Knowing that she's going to be more focused on this uh, like constant sustained damage. Team fight playstyle. Absolutely. But for now, it is once again the jungler focus here for us. As both are starting out on bot side. Good leash coming in from the ADCs, and you always love to have that as a jungler. Actually, Smite on the rep up here from Xin Zhao. He is looking to go hard on the uh, clear speed. Actually, is that... Wait, 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 wait. Is that a level 2 hard gank mid lane? Did he seriously just skip every single camp to gank that victor? Damn. I mean, hey, you gotta respect the aggression there, but sadly didn't get anything out of it. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously uh, like an older strategy, just going for the level 2 gank on the Sin Zhao. You know, you take your first, you take your first camp, you instantly go for it. Now also it makes sense that he smited. it. Actually, we see Toss on top lane aggression. Jax really uh, taking this level 2 push, showing that he, he has this higher attack speed and this higher damage, uh, making use of his uh, lead plus counter strike. Yeah, and especially these prolonged trades, right? Definitely in favor of the Jax because Crispy only gets the uh, grasp every now and then compared to the Conqueror. But on the other hand, on the bot lane, the Caitlyn Lux actually get out traded. That's a rare thing to see. Yeah, this Janna positioning very nice. Uh, Jinx dodging uh, everything that's coming her way, and uh, Caitlyn uh, barely missing the Janna as well. Uh, getting a little bit outspaced, even with the, the, the Janna uh, hotfix nerfs that they did. Might not be as impactful for the support lane, but uh, definitely still uh, a nerf is a nerf. Um, so uh, happy to see that they're still able to, 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 to use this nerf champion like very well and actually win out on the trades against Caitlyn Lux is indeed very uh, surprising yep. to see. We actually have an interesting development towards top side. Ryan just finishing off his clear on the top side of the jungle, but Chad Ping Newt right behind him, going uh, the uh, long way around. That's a Jax in the 2v1, stuns up both, but here is the Gragas. That's a cask oh, down on the floor. Easy first blood on the Jin. Zhao and Crispy is maybe gonna get away. Flashes out, no follow up here for the moment. Phobos doesn't think he needs to burn that one, but good first blood pick up here for Curtain Call. Yeah, very Actually, nicely done. What lane? Oh, no, never mind. Keep going. This is not going to go anywhere. I say as the oh. binding comes in. Never mind. Get your baited. That's an easy kill for Abkivas. He is very happy to pick that one up with the Caitlyn early in the game. Yeah, this was that was a very nice uh, binding hit by Lux very, at the very last second. Uh, Jinx expecting it probably to still be off cooldown. And uh, she, she goes for it and she hits it. It was very nice. But towards the top lane was actually very interesting to see. Um, 
like you said, the, the Grak is having like trouble in this 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 two v two early with Jax, but oh, is we not a gank oh. company mate? Beautiful stun field by Nadeshi, and this is gonna be a more than enough time for Orion to catch up here. Gets the first body slam in, but that Zerath on the run is not gonna go far. The cask cuts off the escape, but there's a sin. He can do some damage. Nadeshi actually flashes over the wall, kill donated over to GG, but Orion is gonna trade one back. It's a one for one, both junglers involved. Finally, the bot lane joins in, but a little bit too late, so no follow-up here. Still, I think Curtain Call is gonna be very happy with that one. Yeah, I was afraid that, oh, we just have constant action. I don't think we're gonna get that much of a break here. Nah, it's just some damage on Phobos. He'll be fine. It's just, just the jacks. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the, this top lane 2v2, definitely, like you said, struggling uh, uh, early at the, the start. But this jacks just had a fully stack conqueror after after that first fight, hitting both champions with his counter strike, getting some auto attacks on the Camille. And once that can conquer is fully stacked up, they just almost one shot the Xin Zhao, and then Camille barely being able to make it allow, actually taking the uh, flash over the ignite, knowing that this lane is a, it's a bit harder to play than normal. Um, Camille lane, so very nice to see that she um, uh, ended up going for this uh, change of the, yep. summoner spells, uh, adapting to her to the champion being picked. Uh, and right now playing a bit, maybe a bit too aggressive, but it's working out. Uh, similar in CS, getting the early base, both champions going for the Sheen early base into uh, heavy fighting. Um, yeah, and, and also Jaeger making good use of the uh, bot lane prior they have going on at the moment, going for that early Infernal Drake, and that's going to be an, imp uh, an important pickup because it's the only Infernal Drake you're going to get this whole game. Yeah, getting an Infernal Drake, obviously early game, is very uh, very detrimental sometimes, especially like towards their champions, oh. having very high scalings. Uh, Camille, Caitlyn, Nox, Seraph all have very high scaling abilities. Getting even a tiny bit of extra damage will uh, help out a ton in the later stage of the game. Absolutely. I, I kind of want to get back to Ryan and the early ganks. Uh, last game we saw a few of those come in. Not too much success on the Lee Sin in the early game, especially towards mid lane, but this time around, they get an early assist on the Victor. That's going to be some stacks and that's going to help Nadeshi to get rolling earlier on. And that is a big help for sure. Yeah, as you see, the, 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 the 43 farm plus the assist, uh, the closer he is, the, the 100, the faster we'll be able to push right. If, uh, last game we saw him upgrade the Q first, which uh, I, think, I think is a mistake. Oh, uh, look at Phobos though. I'm, I hate to keep interrupting you with that stuff, but man, that's a Jax where he shines. You love to see that, at least if you're on the side of the Jax, and that's an easy solo kill picked up. Yeah, really nicely done. Uh, playing perfectly again with the Conqueror, playing for the extended fight. Uh, got a little trading, got some stacks on the Conqueror, and then last second went back in before they fall, fell off. Oh, and, but and the collapse like... comes in from the bot lane here. Curtain call in a little bit of a troublesome position. Chaos Storm goes in, does massive damage. Lumi gets a kill, traded back, gets excited, and can trade so much damage. It's a double kill for the Jinx, and he is on to this Jin Zhao. He is gonna get chunked out harsh, doesn't have an ultimate to do anything, and Lumi is just rolling over this whole fight, has a red buff in his pocket as well. Might be following that one up on GG, but in the top lane, there's some fighting going on as well. Phobos, low on mana, can't do anything else from that one. Flash forward by GG, almost gets it. The heal traded out last second from Lumi. Man, there is some action going in the, on in the second game. That's all the action we didn't have last game, honestly. Yeah, this is like a complete different side of the game, right? Last last game, I think we had first blood at seven minutes, and now we're already at eleven kills at eight and a half. Like a complete like disparity from last game, and this is uh, I think this is a a good thing for the side of Jaeger. Uh, even though the enemy team might get this, like, get more gold going on earlier, I feel like the more gold there's in the game, uh, like shutdowns available, will just give them this, this like ability to, to scale harder and a bit faster. But we get this Zareth ahead, obviously a very uh, uh, skillful champion. Ryan taking the blue buff away, very nice. Yeah, good steal there. Pick that up and deny resources, especially if that one could be o donated over to the Zareth. 
he'd be very, very happy to have that one. And there's another gank attempt to the top side. Oh, the cask after the flash of connect on the stun. But still, Crispy has a lot of health. Can't burst the, him down fast enough before he gets to his own turret. And you don't want to die if a Camille at that stage of the game. Double Janna Tornado. But the final spark is going to connect. The Lux all just completely out lasering Lumi on the bot lane. And sad quickly, you lose the advantage of having three kills on the Jinx. Damn. Yeah, it was very nicely done. Actually, like I was questioning like the juggling that they did, but it, it for, like worked out perfectly. Um, uh, it was really nice to see the top lane, uh, Jack getting the Counter Strike on the Camille hook shot, and then Ryan hitting the cask, actually getting the the, the knock up, but not being able to recast his Q on time. I don't know if he was, I don't, he wasn't stunned, but he, I think he just didn't recast it on time. They didn't get the slow. I think if they get that slow, Camille might die there, but uh, uh, they didn't, and they were not able to uh, finish out the kill at the last second. Yeah. Speaking of Ryan, more mid lane pressure as well from the Gragas. Phobos has to dip out far to finally get that recall in because uh, Crispy was inter interrupting that again and again. But uh, so now, once again, Dragon Pit is gonna be prepared for Jaeger. Because we have the next dragon coming up in uh, 35 seconds. So, kind of the objective focus from game one that Curtain Call had completely mirrored to Jaeger this time around. Yeah, Jaeger actually uh, picking up the first dragon like after after a good small skirmish, and uh, n now they seem to be willing to fight for it. Both teams actually setting up for it, and uh, uh, actually for the first time, we see Jaeger set up for the fight, having this Caitlyn as well, also having the bot lane push, uh, trying to get this last minion wave under the tower. May it will actually mean that they they got this little advantage. Both top members have TP, obviously. After the changes, not able to TP to wards, but definitely able to TP to bottom yep. mid the tower. Ryan caught out a little bit here, the one with his zero stun. GG landing that one nice and clean. And it's a flash force from the Gragas. Looks roaming over, and that's a lot of pressure and presence around the Drake pit. So I don't see any way for Curtain Call to contest that one. Drake already on 1k HP is gonna be take, picked up. Nice root on the Janna, massive burst with the Luxalt and Lumi can only sit and watch. Nice knock there with the cast, Sub is gonna die to that one and that is a Jinx excited. She can kite a little bit better away from the Zen, but the knock up with the Xerath ultimate comes in. Nice combo and Ryan just trying his best to survive as long as possible until his team is there with the follow up. Nadeshi with the beautiful Chaos Storm is going to pick up the first and the second one going over as well. Phobos walking all the way down from the top lane is finally rewarded for his troubles. Picks up two and with that it's almost an equal exchange if it wasn't for the drag. Yeah, the, uh, actually like getting those last few kills, just Ryan buying so much time with his W, you know, tanking up so much damage. Uh, actually getting some stuff done. Uh, really bad that they lost the dragon, of course. Now two dragons down. Uh, we'll hey, look, hurt them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like uh, th this dragon being picked up. Uh, Mirrored from the last side. Enemy team having the dragon advantage this time around. Hurting a lot. Ocean dragon, I think it's a lot less scary than this Hextrack dragon. Slow was something they were missing. They were definitely missing some CC last game. Um, but this game, uh, the Ocean Dragon, not that much. There's not a lot of high, high, high HP targets, right? Um, so I don't think uh, this soul will be as impactful, but definitely help uh, a bit. Getting some Dragons down, I think it might be better for uh, uh, for the side of uh, Curtain Call to not uh, get this soul to be gone. If Elder Dragon is available, this damage can go really fast, and that's not what they want. They want to slow push, get this like uh, stuff going, get their uh, carries going, get their items, get this gold, go late game, have a Jinx and a Victor and a Jack so extremely far ahead, or at least with the, at least three Oh my items. god, the burst! <laughs> yeah, just you don't miss with Caden Lux. That's just long range binding Lux damage and then the double ult. Not even Jakapka can do anything about that. And that tier one turret, this Plates are shredded, that's a lot of gold going over and they're gonna pick up turret first blood here as well. So this Caitlyn Lux lane after trading poorly on the first few levels, they're winning hard now. Yeah, uh, 
Very surprising to see. Obviously, Jinx having this, 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 these four kills, but Janna just not having as much presence as this Lux, not being able to throw out these skill shots. Obviously, W being a point and click and E being more defensive, uh, not being able to just like throw these skill shots. Oh my god. Yeah, it's not getting better with that. No. That is Lux some disgusting damage, but Nadechi oh, going for some aggressive plays, but maybe Death Rocket is gonna go wide, but you can already see support, by the way. <laughs> I mean, this is a support with uh, on only a 500 gold difference to the mid laner. Um, so uh, definitely interesting to see the uh, the flip side of uh, of this uh, Caitlyn last yep. game. Oh, up. the combo once yeah. again! Oh, it's beautiful. It's, it's very so nice to see. This is the exact opposite of last game. We actually saw a lot of mistakes from Jaeger, like just these small little things going wrong at this time. They're doing a similar thing as what Curling called last game, having this really nice like team comp and they're playing perfectly through it. Right? They have this poke long range comp and they're actually playing for it. Absolutely. The only lane really winning hard at the moment, I'd almost say, is uh, the top side. Yes, the Jax is in up in kills, but not really up in CS, so... Maybe, maybe Curtain Call can come back through that one a little bit, kind of uh, get Phobos involved in the fights thanks to the TP and, uh, and kind of snowball through that. But on the other side, of course, Lumi, he has a few kills. It's a Jinx with a Gale Force, so that is only picking up steam slowly but surely, and that, that must be the ways for Curtain Call to come back here, right? Yeah, I, I don't see this Jax. Um... I said it. I said it at the start. Like uh, he can just get some tenacity and and get through the fight. But then he ends up buying ninja tabbies. Obviously, this will help him in the one v one and against Xin Zhao. Um, but not having merc treads and when his like sole job is to tank up some damage and then get to the back line and and like not be CC'd while pu uh, puking a lot of damage over the enemy that he carries. Uh, it's it's like. It's, it's 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 really bad. Like not having this Mercury treads will hurt him so much when don't, the team fights start coming around. So um, don't worry. Think... Once he sits in a Lux binding for like three seconds and gets killed, then he'll swap boots. Yeah, it, I, I would not be surprised to see him actually swap boots uh, uh, through the fight, which wasn't really bad. Triforce being picked up by Jax. Um, nice to see, as we see the gold difference. Like this is some massive flip, right? Uh, yeah. they, they, were, they weren't too far ahead, but... Uh, oh, there's now. a TP from the backline. Beautiful Jenna knockup. Ryan is in the middle of that, and Crispy gets completely caught out. Lux all comes in, does some good damage, but there is still not a kill inside. Phobos finally picks up Crispy off the screen. Nadeji was chased down, but they couldn't kill the victor, thanks to the Crown of the Shattered Queen. Lumi is excited, gonna pick up another one on the Lux. Maybe it doesn't have the ultimate anymore. So they can't really quite follow that up. Ryan maybe can connect there. Yup, that's the Zonyas pulled out. But GG in the meantime was able to snipe out the Victor. Finally, overall almost equal exchange. But current call definitely in the better position to pick up this next Drake now. Yeah, if they, if they could get this Dragon and slow the game down, that's obviously going to be very good for them. Um, uh, I mean, this is what you saw. Like, the, the, the fight went really fast. Compared to last game, where they got two picks before the fight could even start and, and get going, this time they get the picks. He is going back in. The traps are coming down slowly but surely. Peacemaker doesn't quite connect, but here comes G Crispy. He is respawned, and the burst damage from the Zerath all is just too much to handle. Nadeji is coming back in with the victor, but for the moment, this is not a fight to take. Four curtain call. Chat Ping Mute is on the chase as well. And even though the Xin Zhao can't connect quite completely to pick any more kills, they do force them away. Still, Dragon picked up by Curtain Call. Crispy wants to chase. Uh, that's a lot of fighting around the blue buff. Actually, the Camille completely stunned up and knocked out the damage with the Victor Chaos Stone just a little bit too much. And Ryan is the beefy frontline that they want. That Gragas is super tanky. Next stun lands Chat Ping Mute with the beautiful ultimate though, completely blocking out any damage from Nadeshi. And he pays with his life for the attempt on Sins. So, two more kills, and now you can call it an equal exchange. <laughs> now we can call an equal exchange, yeah. Uh, Dragon being picked up by Kernan Call obviously will help a lot. <laughs> Very close to another kill. This Lux is all over the place. She needs, she's everywhere. She needs to be. Someone nerfed uh, this champ. 
Uh, I mean, she got buffed, didn't she? She got E damage. I mean, I can sh I can see that she got more E damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the part that we saw. No. Uh, yeah, we we see we see the items being completed. Um, Caitlyn with the Lord Dominix. Um, it's gonna start hurting a lot, especially like now it becomes even less worth having these ninja tabbies. And we saw that the, at the end of the last fight, uh, in inside a dragon pit, that, like where Gragas and Victor barely died, the the, the cast from from Gragas went for the Caitlyn, trying to like disturb her from going further away, and then she just perfectly kill forces it, gets that extra bit of burst damage, and is able to free hit the entire fight. So. I think if yeah. that cast might have hit, they might have been able to uh, survive a bit longer, maybe uh, get that kill on the Sintao, but not be able to close you out. Yeah, uh, it just, just shows you how much uh, Curtain Call relies on Ryan to find the right engagers, right? And once that Gragas cask is out, once that Gragas doesn't connect, you're in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, it it, uh, it it hurts to see that they aren't able to like do the same thing as last game. Obviously, of course, instead of the Lee Sin now having a bit more of a supportive pick, like the Gragas more playing with his tank Gragas, uh, not nothing high damage. It's really showing that they're they're not just not able to like force the, the same things that they did last game, uh, roaming around the map, fighting everything. Even though they have this Janna, they just they, I feel like they. It, it, has, it has a different aspect than like this Leona slash Nautilus they had last game. Just like going in, getting the CC done and having a high damage carry. Now having this like Gragas eing in, yeah, you, you get a stun, but your Janna doesn't do enough damage to like follow this up compared to when yeah. it was the Leona going in with the decent damaging uh, whatever they like found. Yeah. You can see Phobos is trying his best to kind of defend the turret, but definitely not working out. And I, I want to argue that the uh, Lux support pick, oh my god, look at the burst. The ace from, uh, the ace from downtown is going to put that kill into Abika Abkivaz, sorry, Abkivaz's pocket. And from there on out. Where was I? Right, the Lux pick. I think the... <laughs> uh, I think the, the biggest issue I had with the Nautilus last game was actually the... Uh, the reserved playstyle brain that Sub has, right? And the Lux is definitely a lot better suited to the playstyle they're showing today. Yeah, I think I think he might have been playing like a bit similar, like he's in positioning with how he's playing this Lux right now, starting up the Baron. Uh, today going out, maybe following up somewhere. Yeah, that's a lot of poke from over the wall from Lumi. He can definitely hit a little bit of that. He's in almost very low. Ryan goes in, gets the steal. Immediately he picks up the kill on the Xinjiao as well. And Phobos is in the pit with him. They're trying to go for this fight. Jax walk back, walks back into the trip. And Abkivas can definitely put out a lot of damage there. Lumi in the front line. That's a front line jinx. You don't really want to go for those fights if you don't get, have the items for it. And Nadeshi. Well, they did steal the Baron, but they're gonna lose most of their players here in this exchange. Victor down for the count. Two Baron buffs left, but still, Ryan with a massive steal. Yeah, Ryan actually getting that steal instantly killing since I was really nice. Um, now they now they able to like heal up with the smite. Uh, you, you thought like yeah, I'm gonna save smite, not gonna use it right now. Then we lose it for sure. Then he tries to save it up and then gets out smited. Doesn't get the heal because there's nothing left to smite and he just gets one shot. Um, yeah, very nice to see from from the side of uh, like Jaguar. Um, uh, Jaguar Jaeger again. Uh, these these like good positioning with Lux Caitlyn. Like I said, uh, Brain Dead Sub was like playing like a like a yeah I guess like a Lux last game. His positioning was just really far, uh, like but it doesn't do anything. You can't hook over walls. You can't like play from that far behind. You need to play this frontline tank and just like find these picks. And he he like was I guess too afraid or not like sure what he was doing. And this time around we see this Caitlyn now almost uh, uh, finishing this IE, having this two and a half items. This is gonna hurt. Like Dragon Soul yeah. is, a, is a is a chance. Like if Caitlyn, I mean she will. Once Caitlyn gets this Infinity Edge at, for, before the next Dragon Fight, this is gonna hurt. Of course, Baron Buff uh, still on Janna and Gragas, the the only two champions that do not need it and don't get any value out of it. Uh, so this is uh, definitely hurting the side of Curtain Call like even yeah. more. And I mean, it's the same as last game, right? Jaeger just gets the kills on the right people, on their carries. And in this game, again, it's the Zerath with six. It's the Caitlyn with nine. 
Of course, some of them on the Lux where you want them, but none on the Jin Zhao, not really any on the Camille, and it just goes to show how much damage they have in the fights now, right? You already mentioned Kate almost uh, completing that third item. Sonya's and the Ludens completed on the Lux, and uh, don't even want to get started on the Xerath Horizon Focus. He's just going to murder people from here on out. But on the other hand, well, this time around, Nadeji actually got into the game a little bit better. So you have some items on the Victor. He is able to fight a little bit harder, and he, well, he was feeling a little bit more aggressive this game already. We saw some more uh, forward plays from uh, the Victor on the side of Curtain Call so far. I'm, uh, I'm still a little bit skeptical about this Sterex on the Jax, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, Sterex Jax is, uh, I mean, it's 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 questionable. Maybe he's like not sure if Bork is still worth it. Um, maybe he thinks that the amount of health being bought by enemy team is, is lower by a lot, so he doesn't want to buy it. Um, I think Sterex might actually be the right buy here, since all he's been doing in every single team fight is, is just tank up damage. He jumps in and then yeah, Caitlyn yeah. ease out and, and uh, Zara flashes out so he just tanks up a lot of damage. But instead of that he could also decide to go Merc Treads and, and maybe not jump in but find these flanks. Uh, right now not being able to find them uh, as of now. Yeah, flanks are gonna be a big thing here because, well, you have you don't really have a dedicated front line on the side of a Jaeger, but Jin Zhao and uh, Camille definitely play the part, so to say. So you kind of want to get to the side. You want to you want to get into the back line. You need to take out Zeroth and Caitlyn with the yeah, relative high range that they have, and Jack's flanks are gonna be a good tool to do that, I'd say for the moment. Phobos in the bot lane. Meanwhile, top is going to be pressured. They want to take down that tier 2. Mid lane tier 2 already uh, chunked out to a certain extent as well. But still, no one answering the jacks on the bot lane and they're not really creating any pressure on any other lane. So, for the moment, Curtain Call able to trade a little bit back here. Yeah, Camille actually deciding instead of teleporting all the way from top to bot, she decides to walk the entire way. Um... Jax uh, uh, afraid that, that someone's going to show up and actually base is perfectly on time, not being able to get collapsed on by the Sin Zhao and Camille. Uh, very nice like red by that. And we see Caitlyn finish the Infinity Edge. Yeah, that's a big and, item power spike. Ooh, Zareth also very close to his death cap. Not sure exactly uh, how close he is, but uh, this uh, will not take very long anymore. He's about 800 short, so a few more waves. Okay, so he's able to get this then uh, before the uh, dragon fight, I think. Oh, uh, definitely, if, yeah. If done well. So we, we see the dragon soul fight here happening, of course, less impact than last game. Uh, definitely a, a weaker soul for them as a team, not having like any bruisers necessarily. Um, then again, no anti-healing having been picked up by uh, Curtain Call right now. So all the healing they get is healing they get. Uh, so yep. uh, it's gonna really depend if, if Seraph maybe can find a quick kill, get the base TP, and actually get this um, uh, finalized uh, death cap before this dragon fight like completely kicks off. Yeah, it would be massive. We can see Crispy backing here uh, at the moment as well, trying to go for a little bit of a shopping spree, but doesn't have too much gold in their pocket. Ryan already in the front line taking some damage, but that Gragas is incredibly tanky. We've seen that already, and he is the one who needs to facilitate the engage here for a curtain call. But on the other hand, the rest of the team stuck behind this wall of Caitlyn traps, so they kind of need to roam around or flash over the wall. And Adeshi gets chunked out pretty hard here with the Zerath poke and it's looking more and more dire by the minute or curtain call if they can fight and engage anytime soon. On the other hand, Drang's not pulled, Phobos in the side lane pushing, has the TP available. They're definitely happy to delay this as long as possible. Now he's on the inhibitor turret even, while the yeah, poke gets a more or less unbearable. Yeah, you need to disengage that one. The Lux is gonna hit hard once again. Whoa. Ryan finds the steal over the wall. Beautiful engage there. In the meantime, inhibitor turret down. Crispy backed. And Ryan has so much disruptive power on this Kraga. So good on the smites as well. Looking great. 
Yeah, this was really nicely done. Uh, again, the Jacks indeed being being on the top side, just taking like four or five waves, two whole towers, uh, opening up this inhibitor for the top side is gonna definitely help him a lot. If you get this top inhibitor, uh, you're gonna get uh, like one or two like really nice uh, dragon fights that are gonna be hard to contest because of this top lane pushing the entire time. And yeah, I mean nobody saw it coming. Uh, Jax, Jax was just like split pushing the top and I think just nobody realized and only once the dragon was already half HP uh, uh, Crispy started backing and I think it was uh, Abrikos that also was trying to back and that's when uh, uh, Ryan just took the initiative to just like, go for the steal and he got it off again. Yep, but you can't steal something if you don't know that it's happening and that is the case right now for this next Baron. Gragas coming in slowly but surely. Baron down to 3k. Can Ryan once again do the impossible? No, this time around he doesn't even get close. The Baron picked up nice quick thinking here by Jaeger. They finally get to that big objective that they wanted. And with that, sieging is going to be that much more easier. Yeah, right now having this Baron buff is very good. Of course, uh, Caitlyn already really good with the Sieging, having his long range. Camille being able to split push a bit easier into this Jax. Jax now picking up third item uh, with Send. Uh, will definitely help him a bit against the uh, blocks and Zareth damage. So, um, all around, very nice done by Jaeger. Uh, seeing that the rest is bot side and uh, Jinx is basing at the bot lane, we can just like for free start off the Baron. They have no idea it's happening. Oh, it's, and there it's, is a pick on the jungler. That's going to be important. If Chapping Mute actually gets caught out here, that would be massive. Lumi gets actually chunked low, hard by the Lux. So the follow up from the Zera once again lands for massive damage, and also Apkivas is going to be caught out, blown up by blowing up the Victor. And this Kate is just massive. This fight, Ryan, the last man standing. Jakapa not even close to the fight for the moment. And Jaeger, well, they are definitely on the hunt and they are capturing all the prey they want. Yeah, Phobos actually being very useful in the last fight, doing a lot of damage, tanking up all this damage with the Zareth and the Wits, and um, like being very tanking, picking up two kills. Uh, Lux almost being completely one shot by this Triforce, like burst damage it got. Um, and this uh, uh, Camille, like just this constant damage for, from this Jax not being able to take up. Obviously, having this Death Dance uh, helps, but plus the, the passive and the old passive, the magic damage together with the W and the Wit's Hand. It's just too much to handle and then that's a problem. Yep. Ryan goes in though. He is trying to connect. Chat Ping Newt already caught out. Lumi is now excited. Oh, the slow from GG lands. The Seraph has so much damage, but finally Phobos finds the flank into the back line. Trispy trying to run down the supporter. Not really gonna get anywhere anytime soon because Ryan is in the way as well. It's a triple kill for the Jax and a quick ticket back into the game for Curtin Hall. Yeah, is this Jax getting three kills right now? This should mean that he should have enough for this death stance. Four items to complete it now. Actually, uh, completely similar to this Caitlyn. It's going to be very scary. Of course, it's going to be still very hard to get on this Caitlyn, but Caitlyn right now, no flash, only heal uh, for this upcoming dragon fight. I don't think she'll have flash ready, maybe barely. Uh, if they can get this fight going like really fast, then they might be able to have this small summoner advantage on the ADC. Uh, would be very, very useful. Jinx, of course, now also having the Infinity Edge completed. This extra bit of cloak, definitely gonna help. This is the, uh, this 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 fight will probably decide the game. If this if this if this dragon goes to the side of Jaeger, having this soul will probably just accelerate him enough to get the next Baron. Uh, and if the uh, curtain call gets a dragon, they probably will stabilize the game to a point where they're able to fight with this Jax, not having. To rely on his pit pushing power, but actually just force a team fight, get a good pick, yeah. maybe finally get this flank that they've been trying to look for all game. Um, only have oh, to maybe even once. a catch. Ooh. It's a crescent guard already traded out. That's a big cooldown on the Jin now on used up. Oh, and Epkivas actually gets hit with a zap. They are trying to follow this one up. That cast gets dodged nicely with the Gale Force, but still, that's a big CD from the Kate on cooldown. She has the flashback now with the heal, so there's a bunch of utility, but still, 
the control of the Drake but definitely on the side of Curtain Call for the moment. But of course you have the long range poke on the other side. Beautiful Zonyas here by the Nadeshi to not get one shot because that would have been a death sentence for the victor. The dragon is picked up immediately. Chad Pingyu all alone in the pit. Can they pick up the jungler? No is the answer because there is a flash. But in the meantime, Apkivas is making the executive decision to just completely take out the base. The inhibitor turret falls and the inhibitor to boot as well beautiful calls here by the jaeger adc yeah actually deciding to just like like book it from the fight knowing that i can set up my traps i'm not gonna be sitting around here oh the flash on the jinx lumi the dodge beautifully done with the gale force and crispy is deep in but manages to find the adc but now it's all on phobos he trades one back the follow-up from nadeshi all on point but still the cast goes in they pick up gg and apkivas is the only one left who can do anything here but he almost gets run down but you gotta be careful you. That's a very, very dangerous Kate Ace in the hole. Doesn't quite take out Ryan, but still. Grag has chunked out enough, but still. Equal fight going on here, and that was not what I would have expected here from Jaeger. Yeah, Jaeger actually uh, not being able to, to get onto this dragon. Sin Tao being pushed out early, of course, burning that ultimate uh, very early on, not having that cooldown, as well as the kill force from Caitlyn, knowing that she was just in a weaker state than, than she was supposed to be. Actually being able to hold on to her flash, though, and surviving the entire fight is very useful, uh, meaning she'll have that for this upcoming Baron. Still don't have Soul, though, so uh, not going to be as advantageous if they won this fight. Um, but now, Jax uh, with a stopwatch in the bag, full build except this last item, but the stopwatch is just like, I mean, equal value almost. Um, Victor, of course, the really nice save at the start of the fight. I think we're gonna have to look around this Zareth boat. Rareth now, four items completed as well. Yep. Void Staff plus all of this, uh, all of this AP. As well as Lux actually having three items on our focus. I did not think she would be this far ahead already. Yeah, we're think... pretty... I don't think they're We're gonna be able to the game. Yeah. Oh, and Ryan with a good cast kind of locks GG into place, but they can't really get to the Zerath here for the moment. No follow-up damage, but still. Curtain call. Thanks to that fight and the Drake pickup, you you mentioned they are able to prolong the game. All the crown not quite long enough in play for Nadeshi to kind of pull this one out, but the damage is quite not there. GG gets the snipe on Jakapa. For the moment, that is going to be curtain call pushed back, but still not quite where they'd like to be. And they, they you have can to see the poke advantage. Sorry. Yeah, this poke advantage was this very high. Uh, hitting the ultimate, it was actually very nice to see. While Janna was not expecting to be focused at all there, Nadachi dodging the skill shot that were focusing him, and he kept on dodging. Even though Zareth was just like, "Yeah, I'm not going to go for the dodging character. I'll just go for the Janna standing still." Uh, managed to hit all three ultimates and just uh, kill some, shoots the last two of the Krakus, which will just tank up the rest, and they set their sights on the Baron already. Yep. Phobos in the bot lane is answering Crispy's split push. Super Mega Death Rocket to check what's going on, and Ryan once again over the wall. He's going in. He gets the Baron again! How does this man keep doing it? It's the third steal this game already, right under the nose, and he even gets out. This man is a god on Krakus. Yeah, very nice. Getting another steal last game as well. Getting also all the steals he needed. Uh, closing out the game because of this. Taking this Baron is very invitation. Nobody dying for the team as well. This time actually being able to maybe take advantage of it. Getting this like extra uh, uh, like this extra tempo going. Uh, this Jax very close to full build now. Um, yeah, we're, we're gonna start seeing things happen. Caitlyn opting for, I think that will probably be Bloodthirst, her last item. Giving that last bit of survivability and extra damage that she wants. It's gonna be an explosive Caitlyn. Uh, already with the Rapid Fire Cannon, Infinity Edge combo with the Gale Force follow-up. If anyone gets caught out, they're just instantly dead like we saw last game. Uh, Janna trying to dodge and wasn't good enough. And right now, if, if ooh, another dragon fight is of course brewing up. Caitlyn actually being able to probably set up this time though. She's stuck in mid lane right now, trying to clear waves, walking the wrong side. Not knowing that there's a dragon spawning. If they can set up, they're, they're, they're Caitlyn every single time Holy... they have been able to set up. Oh, that Lux ult missed. That was weird. The Zeroth ult doesn't quite connect, so that Jinx is still alive and kicking. 
was able to pick up the last whisper. Oh, Ace from the hole from downtown picks her up. Oh, no, you hate to see that one. That's an ADC down for another 50 seconds. That surely has to be the Ocean Soul going over. Yeah, you, you would say that, but then again, you do have Ryan on this Kragus. Are you really gonna think that they're not gonna be able to steal this away again? Oh, nice pick on Nadichi as well, but the turnaround damage from the Victor, you cannot deny he has some damage packing. That Chaos Storm picks up Brain that's up. So it's a one for one. A little bit of a uh, consolation prize here. For and Ryan, for the again, moment. in a position to steal this, is <laughs> to go for it. He's not giving up the Dragon for free. Yeah, he's not giving up for free, but uh, at the moment, all he's doing is more or less delaying the whole thing. Actually, goes back in. He wants to go into the pit. That's a weird decision right there, because he literally just gets murdered before he even gets there. So, Gragas down for the count. Ocean Soul finally going over to Jaeger. And with that, they might oh. be able to close out the game. And Jinx Rocket, Super Mega Death Rocket, very close. Jax now officially full built. Caitlyn most likely also having butlers in base right now. Starting to see five items on people. Uh, actually not. Caitlyn maybe close to it, but doesn't have it yet. Yeah, there it is. Uh, in, oh, actually Guardian Angel also making a lot of sense. We see their, their main carries, both sides, having completely done with their items ready for this last fight, uh, uh, it's gonna be either a, like a Baron or a, an Elder fight that's gonna decide this whole game, or it might just be a random fight, a, a Baron buff finally landing, Janak and Jax being the last people having it. I'm interested to see if they might actually be able to do something similar to the last time, where Jax actually tries to split push another side lane, because he can end the game very fast, uh, and he, he won't, might, might not even need that many minions, so... All the towers being gone on top lane, only one or two towers standing in the bot lane. Definitely something they could be trying to go for, going for some kind of back door. Because right now, they're just going to be blasted down by this Ocean Soul. Every single type of poke they give will just be healed up within like 5-6 seconds. Yep. Then again, it's not really the poke that they are looking for, right? The poke is definitely more on the side of Jaeger. But one explosive team fight could seal the deal for either team. We're 40 minutes deep. Every single carry is on at least three, if not even four items. Lumi is going to finish the fourth one in uh, just a little bit. He has 1,000 gold in his pockets already. There it is. There's the Lord Dominic's regard picked up. So from here on out, it's really just do or die for both teams. And the big question is, can... Can Curtain Call once again find a good flank because Phobos has been able to decide fights on his own with the jump on the Caitlyn. Yeah, if he finds the similar... Oh, like, there it is. Yeah. There is. He connects on Abkivas but can't really stick to her. Nadeshi is there to follow up. The Chaos Storm used as well. For the moment, not too much else happening. Ryan, the cast is not really connecting the way they wanted to, but that is momentum on the side of Curtain Call. Beautiful locks, all the burst is in. That's a Snoomy down, but still, they can do a lot of damage with that Victor, with that Jack. So it's one for one in terms of carries. And the poke damage definitely pushes Curtain Call back for the moment. And yeah, this almost was the game ending fight. Not quite, though. Yeah, Phobos finding that pick on Avika's looking really nice. Even though she has the GA, just getting like really close would have been all he needed. He actually did get the stun off, but uh, using his E already go in, not wanting to flash over, knowing that she'll probably be able to run out. Um, very nice call by Phobos. Trading ADC for mid laner. Uh, very scary, of course. Uh, this Zareth also already on five items. Not something you want to fight without. Yeah, but Phobos is in the middle of the whole thing already. He's sticking to the Caitlyn like glue. Hextech Ultimatum gets traded out, but they are still trying to chase behind the Jags. Once again, the, the Counter-Strike comes in. Caitlyn on 10 HP, GA not procced. Finally, Lumi is back. The Super Mega Death Rocket is coming in. Won't hit anything important though, but still, Curtain Call can follow this one up. GG nowhere to be seen. Finally, the TP comes in. Chad Ping Mute goes in for the engage. Kate down into the GA. 
away and try and ride on her tail. That's the shutdown coming in for the jungler. But still, Nadichi might even die here. The Zerath ult from the backside. Javon hits one last shot. He gets the kill. But Ryan now on his tail. And here comes Lumi. Here comes the Jinx. He's looking to clean house. One kill picked up. He gets excited. They're trying to chase them down. But you gotta be careful with the Zerath. He has so much damage. If you hit one of those skill shots, that Jinx is gonna be toast. Nice cast to interrupt Crispy. Second one this team fight already. That's how long these guys have been fighting. Lumi picks up another one. That's gonna be a free Baron unless there is GG able to do anything about it. But other than that, oh my god, Curtain Call stays in the game. Yeah, actually, uh, being able to stay out is spot out. Oh no. No. Never mind, there's the Zerath picks up the Janna. Ryan trying to connect on GG. Lumi already chunked low. The Luxol doesn't quite connect, but it's the Baron auto attack that picks up the kill on the Jinx. Oh, that was such a risky call by Curtain Call, and GG punishes them so hard. Yeah, really hoping uh, that Jaeger doesn't have any vision of this Baron, and uh, Jaeger actually going for the decision to actually check it themselves instead. Oh. Ryan, dancing shoes? Oh my god, he dances them all, except for the last one, the Comet and the Lux Slow is a little bit too much to handle. Oh Ryan, oh Ryan, almost yeah. got out. Really, really trying to get something done here on four items, so tanky, actually getting some stuff done, but it's it's just not enough. Still surprising to actually like something to bring back up is this Jax still having in like Ninja Tabbies. He's been locked up so many times, like he's half a second away from, from killing this this Caitlyn. As if he has Burk Treads, he would have killed her, he would have popped that GA but like before she would have been able to heal up that far and get those extra autos in. I think it could have actually turned the fight into favor. Like not saying that this Phobos is not playing well, but I think this 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 last item can really be changed. Actually deciding to go for this Silver Mirror Dawn, changing it up. Definitely will also help, but uh, I mean, it, it, it is work threads if you have a cleanse, man. I mean, it also gives tenacity. To be fair, it, it, it does give tenacity. Yep. Um, so it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's a different type of thing. But oh no, I don't think Curtain Call realizes that Elder Dragon is spawning in five seconds, and I mean, Caitlyn takes it too fast for this to matter. Like they're running, but they're not on time. Yeah, uh, especially with Gigi sitting on the blue buff right in their way, there is no way they can contest this Elder Drake already down to 3k. That is going to be picked up immediately. And now Curtain Call, well, they need to turn tail, get back into the base and kind of wait for the inevitable to roll in. And it looks like Jaeger, they're not even considering going for anything along the lines of shopping or basing. They just want to push. I mean, yeah, they have two people on full build. Actually, Lux also full build, not wanting to sell the support item for no reason, right? They're not, they're not like wanting to shop. They know that if the enemy team gets any type of like breathing room, they they lose. So they wanna just get this extra damage, go for this now, hold this tempo that they build up all the game long. Uh, even though they got two barons of them stolen, three dragons stolen, they're not ready to just give this up. They have the elder. They can definitely do this. Baron's still alive for another one minute. They got Baron buff. They got elder buff. They just have to yep. find this one pick, uh, or they just find this engage, and they just use the stats that they have. Absolutely, and they got three inhibitors down, so the super minions will be coming barreling in. Adeshi gets chunked down. Lumi almost has to block the ace in the hole, but there is the engage. Ryan connects an Apkit. Phobos is done, and the Kate is down, but in the back lane, they pick up the Jinx. Lumi is down for the count. Trispy is in the middle of that one with the Hextech Ultimatum. That Victor is toast as well. Ryan in the back line is gonna get roasted as well. The Elder Drake just so massive. Cleaning house here in the base of Kurt Call. Show's over. Jaeger are gonna pull the series back and we're going to game three. Yes, like Phobos going for that last team fight, finding Abifgas actually getting the kill and it's just not enough. Elder Dragon just carrying them through the fight, having this extra da damage, showing that like you can you can kill our ADC what you want, but we still have this extremely fat Lux in Xarath. We're not ready to give up yet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh man. We have a series on our hands. That is exciting. And Jaeger stepping up in the second game. That was lovely to see. I did not expect that turnout after the first game, but no. I am very, very glad to be proven wrong. Nonetheless, we got one more game in store. We'll take a quick breather, and then we'll be back with a lot more action.
curtain call against Jaeger. We're going to finish this one off strong. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Up exactly. Game three is on the line. I'm Liffy. Quill is with me. And we're on to the first series of the Platinum League here in the Phoenix League. Sorry. The Platinum Cup Tournament. Oh, whatever. Platinum. Group A. <laughs> so oh, close. My, 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 my brain just, just left left the game. Probably hit from hit from downtown from Zera or something. I have no idea. Anyway, we've got a series on our hands. Best of three, and we're going to game three. Both teams with one win in their pockets. And man, Quill, Jaeger stepped up massively last game. Yeah, they definitely like showed a different side. Uh, picking this Lux Caitlyn. Uh, and really showing what their main champions can do, P playing through this bot lane, actually having all this aggressive power, and uh, com completely like like taking over the game from there. Absolutely, taking over is quite the right phrase here for that one. But hey, we're back on blue side for curtain call, and that means Caitlyn first rotation is a possibility again and also quite honestly i don't think that lux is going to make it through the ban phase no i don't think uh, i don't think we're gonna get a lux again it would be uh, very surprising to see if uh, that one got through uh, compared to last time uh, definitely uh, took the game apart but we see similar bans okay soraka uh, nothing changed maybe the order soraka being banned earlier than last time Quirky still being banned. Uh, people really don't want to fight. Actually, yep. Zareth being banned. Maybe we don't see the Lux ban. Maybe they thought the Lux was less of a problem than the Zareth. Maybe they ban both. Um, it would be interesting to see if the if the Lux. Maybe maybe they ban Caitlyn. Maybe they think if we ban the Caitlyn, Lux won't be picked up as easily. They're gonna have to pair it with something a bit weirder. Victor being banned. First game, first game with Victor being banned. Victor been played for both sides. Um, both sides actually. Uh, Victor losing, right? Yeah. Um, so. Uh no, it was, uh, it was Nadeshi twice on the victor, so definitely throwing a wrench into, uh, into Curtain Colt's plan. I'm really curious what the adaption for the mid lane will be in that case, but oh, we'll stick Lux to the Shivana band through. out. Lux actually makes it through, as you mentioned. Maybe they felt like the Zerath was the actual problem in the long run. Because the Lux, well, the biggest impact, quite honestly, that Branded Sub had was in the mid, in the early game, in the mid game. Yeah, true. I think actually the the mindset behind this is that we don't have to ban the Lux because we're going to pick the Caitlyn at, at the blue one. So they don't need to ban yeah, the Lux here. Uh, so they're probably just going to react uh, like they've done before. Maybe they can pick up the Lee Sin again, was banned last time. They pick up the Lux, maybe Lux Lee Sin. I think this would be fine. You can still flex it to mid lane. Uh, you catch your jungler and we've seen what Ryan can do on this Lee Sin pick. Uh, not actually much junglers banned, only Shivana banned from Ryan and the Viego banned uh, from mm. Ping. So, yeah, Lux locked in, expecting to see the Lee Sin. Uh, maybe we, they change it up, maybe they want to pick the ADC here immediately, knowing that Caitlyn has already been picked, don't want to show their full hand yet. Uh, maybe Lux could even be flexed ADC, I don't know. Jin picking up, does make sense, oh. also a good pairing with the Lux. Uh, I like this. I like the Lux a lot, yeah, the Jin is a decent answer into the Caitlyn, but the Leona, of course, is going to add a lot of extra pressure on the lane right well she didn't add as much pressure as we would have expected in game one so we'll see if curtain call is going to be a little bit more aggressive but once again this seems to be the repeat of game one here from curtain call as they pick up the listen as well but i'd love to see the lux on the mid lane get that burst mage onto gg who has been doing a fantastic job and for me is more or less the mvp for jaeger at the moment yeah, I think picking up the uh, uh, mid lane here is a lot more important. Maybe they think we need to pick the jungler, we want to like get the counter pick, but if they don't pick mid lane here, they're going to get... Yeah, so now mid lane is going to be banned, right? Like Syndra, uh, or maybe his... Uh, I don't know what, what else was going to be banned, but definitely the Syndra is not going to make it through again. Oh, um, I'm expecting the Lux to go mid. Lux is also... That is a very good point. Lux being able to go mid as well. Maybe they could actually even just... Uh, pick top lane here, just blind pick some some top lane tank, and then forcing their last pick, they have to like force a uh, curtain call to choose who goes where, and then they can pick with their last pick if uh, the, the Lux actually goes mid. Maybe they decide to pair the Jin with the Janna themselves or something else. Well, who knows? Who knows? I mean, there are some, uh, there are a few different supports you can pair up with a Jin in general. Jin, uh, one of those ADCs that also can lane alone fairly decently if you want to go for a little bit of more roaming pressure. 
Um, other than that, we kind of talked already about the uh, play style that uh, Brain itself had, like the Nautilus, the Nautilus, definitely almost a bit too passive almost, but he looked fantastic on the lock, so maybe something along the lines of a Karma. Karma could also be a very good pick, especially if they um, make it some kind of front to back uh, like playstyle. Definitely help out their team. Um, this Jace, of course, being big. Yeah, like I said, the Syndra TF still going to be banned. Um, yeah, they, they need to pick up this mid lane here because otherwise, all the mid laners they're going to want are definitely going to be gone. They're going to have to go through some like lower like lower priority champions. Uh, maybe we get to see some new champions, Seri and Akshan, both enabled, both uh, able to be picked as well. Haven't seen them yet. Uh, would be su a big surprise, but we see the Camille for the third game in a row. Yeah, might be, might be. But that Camille picked up, that of course, and the Jace band out as well as the Shen. I mean, the Jax is still open, that worked really, really well for Phobos last game, and... Uh, I don't really see a reason why you shouldn't pick this one up, but on the other side, you can also pick a Wukong or a Goriana for the mid lane. Okay, interesting pickup here for Nadechi. And that leaves, of course, the last pick, either support or mid lane for Jaeger. And this is where the spiky, spicy picks come in. What else is in the pool of GG? Yeah, they have to really think about this. Like, uh, I think Lux would be fine into Oriana, but I, I think they could also still opt to put his Lux into Caitlyn. I think they want to, yeah, I do think they want to pick a mid laner here. Um, in theory, this is of okay. course still a flex. They could actually still put this in bot lane. Um, this can definitely ruin Leona's E uh, and, and engagement dental. I still think Vega right now is very strong. Recent buffs to him and the item change definitely have mm -hmm. helped him a lot. So I think the Vega pickup is, is quite good here. This will um, definitely help them. Uh, have this late game scaling that they're missing right now. All they kind of have is this Camille Lux, I guess. Jin, of course, does scale, but it, like a bit differently. He's obviously also picked off very easily, and Vega kind of just has this point and click, you're dead. Um, late game scaling, which is yeah. very, very, very well. Also, this I think Vega Cage is very good, of course. Lee Sin, Wukong want to be dashing around. Um, personally, similar to I, the Poppy. Yeah, I guess yeah, it does kind of work. Obviously, it's a bit different. It's a a, a lot a lot higher cooldown, and um, definitely because Faker is going to be mid lane, he's going to have less levels than uh, a top laner would be. Um, so, I think we're going to have to really again focus on this bot lane, right? This mid lane is going to be a bit like less pushy. Oriana obviously can push quite okay. Uh, of course, can only really start pushing once his last chapter slash mythic has been picked up and rubuffs are being given. Faker definitely struggles in the, uh, um, like, def definitely uh, struggle in these early uh, pushing fights. Um, yeah, yeah. Faker being able to scale up, Camille having to... Uh, the, uh, question, the question also is, right, because uh, we saw Ryan put on an insane amount of early prisoner, right? And Faker can definitely get punished hard by that. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how much pressure Ryan is going to put on the mid lane this time around. Of course, we still have the Caitlyn Leona on the bot side. We already spoke about that game one. It's kind of the, the duo we expect the most pressure from, the most uh, incentive on the side of Curtain Call for the early game. But this time around, they're against the Jin. I'm not quite sure how that one works out. Yeah. Um... I think I think Caitlyn Leona, if this Vega just ends up just going mid, so it would be a Luxin. This is like most likely scenario. I think this is, uh, of course, level one, definitely higher favorite for Leona, being able to go in, uh, potentially like pushing for this level two randomly, because uh, they obviously have the uh, relic shield over to the spell thief's edge. Definitely going to help with the push. Um, it's it's going to be really scary if they if they find this Lux or Jin. Jin actually maybe be maybe going for the cleanse this game. Uh, might be able to get away with it. Uh, or maybe thinks it's not worth it, of course, because he has these, uh, the high movement speed late game. Not wanting to waste a cleanse on something like that. This game is really interesting. We, we're seeing some picks we haven't seen. Uh, both the Jin and the Vega Oriana Wukong. Four champions we, we, we haven't seen uh, through the entire uh, series. Interesting uh, that we actually have two champions that went through every single game. Didn't we? Jin Lee Sin got banned once and picked twice, and Camille actually got picked every single game. As well as uh, actually Caitlyn being picked in the exact same spot every single game. 
Nice yep. to see that they 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 think that Caitlyn is really just worth the the pick. Absolutely, the Kate is one of the power picks currently, and uh, well, just as contested here. But ladies and gentlemen, and of course everyone in between, uh, there seems to be a little bit of a emergency on the player side, and uh, they are asking for a little break, which is why. We, of course, will grant that to them, but that also means we'll not keep talking for another 10 minutes about this draft we have in front of us, but we'll hand it off to a little bit of a break. So bear with us. Game three is going to start off hot in just a few minutes, but until then, stay with us. We'll see you soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a lot quicker than we were expecting, but we're definitely not complaining about it. So we are on into the, uh, well, the live draft. We'll get this figured out and then back into the game, game three between Jaeger Esports and Curtain Call Gaming. And man, let's get back to these comms because uh, we saw a very different draft than, uh, well, almost all bo both games, right? We kind of went back to game one for Curtain Call with a little bit of a uh, monkey style uh, change up here. And a little bit of game two again for Jaeger. Yeah, uh, definitely we, we saw the change up. This is of course important. Okay, Oriana going mid. Now this, uh, Vega, yeah, Vega still going mid. It was obviously the last question. Maybe Lux will actually be uh, flexed to the mid lane. Um, yeah, no, the the change up they did to the draft. Uh, I'm not sure if they if they if they thought that Jax was just not as useful last game. Uh, maybe thinking that Jax won't like do a lot into this uh, into this Jin Lux combo. Uh, maybe they they think that the Wukong with this a bit more mobility is able to like get something done. Higher CC is a bit better during team fights, right? Less yeah, of a one v one champion. It's it's also a bit uh, a bit more wombo combo, right? You, you have the you have the Counter Strike on the Jax, but on the Wukong you have the Cyclone knock up, and combine that with the Shockwave. That's a much more effective ball delivery system than the Jax, right? Yeah, it's it's definitely and yeah, like like I said, the, the cleanse on the Jin makes sense. They they need to not be caught in this early game. They need to be able to walk away from it. Um, yeah, I think we're not going to see many surprises here. Uh, again, Flash and Camille. I think that you could potentially still take Ignite like she did in game one. Uh, but maybe the... Uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be third game for Crispy on Camille. Uh, definitely showing that that uh, he has the prowess to, to control this champion, finding these random picks everywhere, getting these really nice Hextech ultimatums. Uh, hoping to, to see uh, to see what, what, what he can do this game. Of course, Wukong is a bit harder matchup. Uh, definitely, like you know, a, a spooky champion to go against has this attack speed, has these like you know higher mobility, can change things up, block your stun, uh, stun yourself out of it. it. Is a lot of like it's a lot of utility himself. Uh, a lot better setup as well for ganks. So, like big question is um, where does Zhao is going to go in the start? Since Zhao, of course, going to go again, go just. Like, both teams going for the bot lane makes a lot of sense, but we saw this last games. We saw both, actually, both sides going for the top lane first, trying to get their own top lane ahead, then leave the lane alone and focus completely on the bot lane. And it's been working out for both teams quite well so far. Both taking one game away with it, and uh, we're gonna have to see what what happens now. Lux Jin, of course, a lot different combo than Caitlyn Lux. Now the champ's been swapped around. We mm -hmm. see this Leona. Uh, we definitely see that there is a, a bigger team fight advantage, right? For Kurt and Call, Digger Esports definitely have a weaker team fight, but have a lot yeah. more scaling in their own pocket. Uh, less wombo combo, more uh, pick potential uh, with this Lux. And it, it's it's kind of uh, something I like to talk about. It's kind of e along the lines of ease of execution of the comp, right? Because uh, Kurt and Call Gaming much more team fight orientated, but also a lot simpler, more straightforward. You go in. You press your R buttons and you're done with the fight because the shockwave, well, hopefully hits. The Wukong just spins through everything. And in the meantime, Caitlyn just shreds everyone, right? And on the other side, you have this little bit more pick style. Of course, you you have uh, you have Camille Zin Zhao going in for the fights, but the uh, Vega Jin Lux follow-up the right there is not as effective. So you're definitely better off playing a more pick style of a team fight. Uh, pick teamfight style that way jesus yeah uh, trying to get these picks uh, will definitely help uh, 
maybe even be able to like you know pick st uh, people off with the Vega cage you know like uh, the 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 last uh, the last like millimeter trying to walk out of it and still get caught. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think this it's gonna be uh, there's gonna be a lot of focus around this uh, mid lane bot like every single other game, and I think Wukong Camille. Uh, might be even more left alone than they've been in the other games. I think Camille knows that she can win this matchup, and I think Buko knows he can win this matchup, but they have to play it properly. And I think we might get to see a uh, double topside start and actually going towards this bot lane and getting this bot lane ahead. Uh, both teams having seen what a Dragon Soul can do to your game. Yeah, Dragon Soul is going to be a massive thing. Jaeger had really, really good pressure on the objectives last time around. Uh, the only uh, issue they had really there really was Ryan stealing everything yeah so uh, <laughs> we'll every, see if he can game. keep that quota up this game yeah I mean like, yeah if, if he gets these steals uh, like both 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 games we had uh, the, the, the the opposite team taking three dragons at the start and then getting the soul in the end and winning the game just getting a soul get the bear and get the elder and it just wins you the game I mean it's very simple you get all three buffs and you win the game it's like like this this triforce like magic <laughs> you get three you get all three puzzle pieces and you you finish the game with it's like a lot easier to do um yeah so it's i think again you're right with the with the like the simpler execution from curtain call uh and with probably the the help of ryan setting up these plays maybe with his kick he gets like some early pick and afterwards wukong can fight his flank with the oriana ultimate on top of him uh definitely be able to win these team fights a lot easier Absolutely. So we'll definitely need to see how well Phobos gets through the lane so far. He has put in a pretty impressive performance on the top side. I almost call it a 2-0 in terms of laning wins against Crispy so far. But of course, it was always Ryan and Chat Ping Mute both involved on the top side. So you can't really uh, credit it to the laners alone in that case. But it remains to be seen. Ryan with an aggressive style on the Lee Sin. Early aggression coming out last game from Chat Ping Mute, though. I uh, want to throw it back to that uh, early, early level 2 gank right after the red buff. So, there's definitely some spicy stuff these junglers can pull. And once we get to the bot lane with that stuff, hopefully we finally get that bloodbath we were expecting in game 1. Yeah, it is uh, like an even more aggressive bot lane than we had in game 1. Jin, Jin, uh, 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 maybe not more aggressive, but Jin Lux definitely uh, looking for picks himself as well. Would be very surprised to see if um, uh, nothing ends up happening again. But uh, we've been surprised uh, like more times this 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 side. So we don't have a lot of changes, I think, to uh, to runes. Obviously, Face Rush, Oriana, very standard. Most things have been has been the same as well. But the Predator on the Vagar, I think people that uh, have been watching pro players or maybe some streamers have definitely seen this this Vagar Predator yep. play. Really easy yep. to roam around the map. Definitely help them a lot. As we Absolutely. see pings being shut down. Uh, seems to just be another five, five point. Absolutely. Five point defense. You don't want to throw every anything away in the early minutes of the game before the minions are even in on game three. Curtain call a gaming gi against a Jaeger Esports. It's going to be an absolute banger because the first two games already were. Here are in the middle of the Phoenix League. Platinum Division Group A. We're finally starting off the season right. And in full fashion, ladies and gentlemen, game three. And we're just looking at Lux here. What a pretty skin. That's a very pretty skin. Oh, Camille. This is very dangerous. Oh. He's in walking up. Sandwiched having, here. Having to start hookshot will definitely hurt this. Um, Wukong will uh, will use will use this to get some really nice early trading. Like I said, both jungle are starting top sides. Uh, I don't think anyone will uh, will come top lane for for like the first five minutes of the game, knowing that this dragon is the highest priority of the game. They will start top, get their bot lane ahead. No, make sure that they get this push, then maybe transition that into a mid lane gank, like they'll try to, and get their bottom lanes ahead. Get this priority around the dragon, and uh, uh, try and uh, stabilize the game from there. Uh, stabilizing is gonna be an important factor here. But first, but well, we're, we're we'll we'll be happy with some good old trading, right? Tra trading is uh, is the nice stuff. Actually, 
top lane being less aggressive than I expected. Uh, definitely would have expected a bit more aggression from the Wukong. Actually not being able to find these trades right now. Xin Zhao actually going for a very fast clear, going from uh, red all the way to blue, skipping every single camp. Lee Sin going for a more standard full clear. And Ryan mm -hmm. really showing his sides, knowing Caitlyn will push this first two waves and then trying to slow push or fast push the last wave. Knowing that if he goes for this gank on level three, he might actually perfectly be on time. And before Lee Sin, to get this gank off, this this could be very dangerous. This might just be the case. He get, he's on the ground right now. He's going to pick that up, but it's a deep river ward from Jakarta. And that is going to spot out that Jin Zhao as soon as he enters the river. So there is not much in terms of surprise factor. And for the moment, maybe it was communicated. Maybe he's just going for it anyway. He's turning back around to just start full clear. And yeah, no, it was... It was really nice pinged out by Brain, Brain Dead Sub. We pinged out that uh, Leona was walking to the river, knowing that they're not able to get this gank off. Uh, they just decide against it and will go uh, for the full clear back towards mid. Uh, maybe telling a sight on this. Uh, actually, they're going for this little invade. Ooh. Getting a ward down. And uh, Lee Sin is going to start covering his bot and helping the bot maybe check this uh, uh, crab. Yeah, it could be an interesting fight here because that scuttle definitely is going to be contested. But you can already see the luck support coming in strong during the laning phase again, poking out Jakapka quite a lot. But for the moment, they'll have to let the Leona run off to river. Scuttle Crab is going to be secure. Then for now, Ryan heading up towards the mid lane, but GG already basing. I'm probably looking for an early tier pickup here on the Vega. No, oh, actually, it's the Boots for the Predator. Yeah, Boots getting this Boots picked up. Uh, crystal towards the last chapter. Oh, everyone being rooted up. Lots yep. of you hitting everything, hitting. Vega is starting to stack his, uh, his, 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 his uh, what is it called? His passive. His phenomenal evil power, of course. Very <laughs> phenomenal. We'll is definitely... that the actual name of the Vega passive? That is the actual name. I, I, I had to think about it, and I'm pretty sure it's phenomenal. I can look it up, of course. Yes, it, it's check. indeed phenomenal evil power. Amazing. Amazing. No, it's not amazing, it's phenomenal. Oh, true. <laughs> indeed. True. Indeed. Also very evil. But hey, the things you learn when you cast leak, name of passives. Yeah, Sometimes I think I think I think there's a very few abilities I would not know the name of. Actually, they are oh, going in. Yup, that's a deep engage, and there's the first blood. That's the burst damage we were expecting from this Caitlyn Leona lane. Finally, they are able to connect and in a grandiose fashion, beautifully done. Yeah, uh, very nice. Like very nice pickoff, knowing that they're not able to actually get on this Jin, uh, going for the uh, uh, locks instead. Because if he tries to go for this Jin, he'll just cleanse out of it. Will just be uh, like a semi-wasted uh, engage. Maybe they will even lose the fight because of it. So going for this was instead uh, very nice. Then Jin walking into the trap, very unlucky, uh, ends up uh, trading almost all of his life for it. Getting the tempo ahead, going for this early base with the noon quiver. Getting also the kill going to Caitlyn. Very very nice. And uh, yeah, they're, they're gonna take this early lead and uh, try to snowball with it. Yeah, of course Jin a little bit ahead in CS, but uh, Lumi should be able to uh, pick up the slack there in just a little bit. Phobos now hitting level 6, so top lane is gonna start to get spicier soonish, hopefully. I hope so, yeah, at least. Of course, both above top laners took a relatively early base. Uh, Wukong took it a bit earlier. So uh, Camille has the uh, tempo advantage with the Sheen. Obviously a lot stronger than a single longsword, especially for something like a Camille. And um, now uh, Vagar also hit level 6, gonna get the base. Might have enough for Lost Chapter already. And uh, with Lost Chapter and Boots completed, uh, we'll be able to get these roams done. Yeah, Lost Chapter in the back. Dragon being picked up by Lost Just Ryan. Yep. And uh, Curtain Once Call uh, Esports fighting against the Curtain Call champion. And uh, they they don't uh, they don't seem to care much. Yeah, maybe maybe it's fate. Maybe not. Who knows? I mean Twisted Fable's banned, but who cares? Uh, anyway, um once again blue side very much on the uh, on the advantage here on the Drake and I wanna credit that to the Caitlyn to some extent. 
Yeah, Caitlyn uh, actually already like trapping off early. Of course, not doesn't have uh, complete control of and uh, uh, able to sh put like five traps down. But Stephanie still being able to just make sure that even if there's anyone in the area, uh, she pushes the bot lane very fast and then comes to help with this dragon. Uh, Wukong actually kind of getting beaten in the in the one v one right now. They're kind of similar in CS as uh, Wukong has a big wave to still take, but uh, Phobos definitely struggling in this matchup right now. Yeah, Wukong, for, to me, uh, to some extent, one of those champions that needs to scale a little bit before he can actually become very dangerous. But having that Sheen picked up now, definitely a huge advantage. But as mentioned, uh, in draft already, it's it's a top lane that has been heavily influenced by the junglers in the past two games. And so far, no ganks top lane from either Ryan or Chapping Mute. Uh, actually, curious observation that Ryan basically hasn't ganked at all this game. No, uh, not ganking at all, but uh, 20 CS of the Sin Zhao, uh, trying to keep this power firing up. Of course, he is a level ahead, walking towards the bot lane. Lox Jin is a little bit far ahead for how far behind they are, and he's, he's going to look for this gank. Absolutely, it would be a lovely opportunity to get in there. Abkiva, uh, Abkiva's... Definitely someone you can take out quite quickly there. But Jin finally hit level 6, so the follow-up, in case they get out of that whole situation, might be deadly. But here comes Ryan. Level 6 is available. Beautiful flash engage here from Jab Kapka. For the moment, they get in there. Ignite lands. The kick just for damage is good enough. But here comes Chad Pingmute. The curtain call, I just mentioned it, I just called it. The follow-up damage on the turnaround is just a little bit too rough. Oh, the grenade, beautiful heal, but Lumi is in a very, very tricky situation. There's a Vega coming in. That's a easy pickup with the old GG. Gonna be very happy with that. Yeah, uh, very nice Vaker walking down, uh, making sure they, uh, they, they get that last pickup. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the 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 curtain opened up for the curtains, and uh, it seemed the the answer was death everywhere. Um, but very nice for Faker to pick up the skill. This will definitely help him accelerate in this early game. Um, get it, being able to get this blue buff, making making him able to just like stack infinitely at at the start. Um, yeah, getting the kill with the primordial burst. Not sure if he needed to use his ultimate. Um, but uh, uh, um, I, I guess he did, and they got the kill. Oriana trying to save the Leona, and Leona barely being able to make it out alive. As the, the, the bot lane stabilizes a little bit, I guess. Jin didn't get the kills, but uh, he got his assist, and Caitlyn starting to actually fall behind further and further in CS. Yeah, and of course, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, the CS advantage, that's going to be big. Of course, the two kills picked up by Lumi are definitely going to help. But so far, gold-wise or item-wise, they're absolutely even, except for that one attack speed dagger in the pockets of the curtain call carry. For the moment, it's gonna be Phobos on top side. He is going in hard with that cyclone, and boom! It's a Camille dead on the floor. The Kapka gets rooted out, denied the engage. But still, that Leona, Caitlyn bot lane, trying to put on a lot of pressure. And once again, it's Ryan waiting in the wing wings. Yeah, Ryan uh, is actually trying to, to like get these ganks going. And last time, his uh, of course his sonic wave got got, got flashed out. Uh, Leona a little bit late with the engage, um, but now uh, Phobos getting this this like solo kill top, not even having to use his own flash, being able to save that for a potential team fight around the herald or something else. Definitely gonna help out a lot. Uh, we're getting close to 14 minutes. It's oh, Ryan there's Ryan. The there's the kick again. My god, this man does it every time on Lee Sin. Kaleen is an understatement on that one beautiful pickup. And they can snowball that into possibly a dragon that is spawning in 20 seconds. Yeah, very nice done. Uh, if this is the, if they're able to pick up this dragon, might be a little bit hard because, of course, uh, respawn timers are not very long. Uh, since Tao decides to leave the dragon be, give up this dragon and go for the herald. But I feel like we've seen how this oh, plays no. out. Yeah, this plays out not very well for Chapping New because Boba surprises him on the herald. But thanks to the roam from Crispy, they are actually able to secure that for the moment. That Wukong is insanely dangerous. No, they actually cancelled it. 
They actually cancelled the Herald, but now it's an Orianna caught out. The Lox ult comes in. Vega burst doesn't quite connect. Nadashi is able to flash over the wall and get out. And here is the pincer. Nice, a gauge flash over the wall by GG. Trying to get the kill. Picks one up, but it's taken out by Ryan. The other kill going over to the Leona, I think. Or was it for us? I have no idea who picked that one up, but it is a dead support, that's for sure. Yeah, getting, uh, yeah, actually, Vega flashing over the wall and uh, uh, surprising uh, that AK. Uh, getting the Q ult flash was very nice. Uh, of course, Lee Sin barely hitting the Sonic Wave, picking up the last heal also helped a lot. Um, but I feel like we've seen how this, this, this plays out. Whatever team got the first two dragons, and every single time a team got the first two dragons, and both of the time they were uncontested, it happened again, and this time it's for Curtain Call. I mean, if the games play out like the other games have, this this should be a win, right? Uh, you get the first two dragons, and you somehow you manage to get so early. Uh, so uh, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. Last game we did go to seven dragons, of course. Uh, Ryan stealing away all those dragons. We haven't seen any steals from Chat Ping Mute. Maybe he's able to turn it around and uh, uh, pull a Ryan on the Ryan. Uh, who knows? Who knows? It's gonna be something we have to wait and see. But yeah. You're absolutely right. So far, 100% win rate for whoever picks up the first two dragons in the game. And, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see if Gingert and Coral can pull it out. But once again, yeah, we have some kills on the Caitlyn. We don't have much on Nadeche in the mid lane, but Phobos already winning top lane once again. So you can definitely rely on this Wukong to carry some of the team fights. And from here on out, it's not going to get easier for the boys over on Jaeger. Especially with that Herald picked up by Ryan as well. What are what are kind of the angles that Jaeger needs to take here now to get back into this game? I mean, it's obviously very hard, right? Like the the only scaling they have is this uh, is this Camille Vegar. Lux being zero four is not going to be much relevance throughout the game. Of course, still going to be able to do some damage, but uh, if she doesn't like find Oriana or the Camille uh, or the Caitlyn, it's not going to like uh, add to a lot of damage. Mostly just going to be a little bit of a CC and a little bit of slows. Already losing half HP to a single shot is a lot. But it's once again Lumi with the dancing shoes. Jakapka is flashing out. Nice roam from Gigi. You can already see that Jaeger is putting a lot more pressure in the past few minutes on the spot lane, trying to answer the little lead that Lumi and Jakapka have accumulated for themselves. But so far, nothing's been working, working out really for them. Yeah, Ryan finding these like lane ganks, finding all these opportunities, and uh, Chapping Mute really like struggling to get something done. Gives the blue buff over to GG, knowing that this Vagar will most likely be the more important factor throughout the game. Already sitting at a solid 200 uh, AP, 130, which is his passive. Uh, definitely gonna start helping out uh, throughout this lane. Yep, oh, there's the full root on Jakapka. The solar flare goes down as well. And look at the damage this Caitlyn can dish out. Oh my god, the combo. It is beautiful. It's a double kill for Lumi. And so far, Curtain Call is not showing any weakness in this third game. Yeah, no, this uh, Caitlyn has been played every so well, every single game, uh, going uh, on and on uh, in between every single game. Like, like this Caitlyn has just been pressured so much, being able to actually win every single lane that has been put in. I mean, we've seen it being picked uh, at first pick every single game, whoever got blue side. And I mean, so far they won every single game. So I, I guess, uh, I guess it must be working. Yeah, it must be working to some extent. But Ryan definitely overstaying his welcome here a little bit. That's a predator Vega closing in hard on him, and it's a shutdown. Going over to the person you uh, you least likely want that shutdown on. It's the Vagar. Yeah, of course, Vagar uh, already have a need needlessly large rod in his second item slot. Uh, might even go for the second item uh, uh, death cap. Obviously, very uh, common done on Vagar, giving that extra AP from his passive as well. Uh, would be surprised uh, to not see it. Maybe we see the Shadow Flame instead. Um, yeah, uh, Vagar getting all this gold, sitting on a solid thousand gold again in his fleet. And Jin and... Ooh. Curtain call, Lumi, dancing, left, right. Ooh. 
No way he just predicted that flash. Abkivers, you young god. Oh my lord. Well, that's a Caitlyn picked up. That's a lot of the gold on curtain called done and dusted. That's gonna be a free third drain. Yeah, I mean, this is the. I mean, I hope this is the dragon, unless Ryan uh, does some good steal again. He's done it throughout the whole game. There he is, he goes in, he gets chunked out hard and bursted before he can pick up anything. But Phobos is still in the middle of the fight and this is a massive Wukong. Jakapka in there as well, they chunk out the Jin. Finally, Dragon picked up and GG with a beautiful cage to keep the, pe the peel going for himself. But finally, Nadechi joins the fight and this is the first time you see this Orianna really do anything and it's immediately big impact. Double kill for the mid laner and it looks like Curtain Call pulled that one back even though they lost the drain. Yeah, Orianna of course was stuck in base. Uh, I don't know exactly if she could have teleported, maybe it was off cooldown and it only came off cooldown mode during the fight. Uh, but it definitely uh, wasn't there on time or not on the right side, maybe pushed out, I, I didn't quite catch it. But now she ended up getting two kills, definitely will help her a lot. Also picking up the needlessly large rod. Uh, Vega uh, showing that he's going for this death cap second item. Will definitely be a big power spike to look out for. Um, for uh, Curtain Call, once this Vega has that, uh, fights will start going a very scary direction. Uh, yeah, and Caitlyn being picked up at the start, of course, really hurt that team fight. Um, but Oriana showed up at the very end, having all of her spells ready. Wukong, of course, uh, Probo doing a lot of damage in the back line, getting all of that damage down, all of the CC. And I mean, yeah. we saw that we, we've seen this before, but I mean, now the third dragon being picked up. Uh, is, a, is a change from the other games. Yeah, I mean, it definitely helps uh, delay the whole thing a little bit further, but we kind of talked about it, right? The uh, the longer the game goes, it, it only goes into uh, in favor of Curtain Call, uh, sorry, uh, of Jaeger to an extent. You have the Vega scaling and the Camille a little bit, but it's not necessarily what you are completely looking for, right? Yeah, of course, you, you do kind of want to delay the game. Get this Camille and... and oh, oh, oh bye-bye! Brain that soup having a very rough game. Uh, using Flash and not being able to dodge Solar Flare plus uh, Sonic Wave. Still falling short. And the second hero being picked up by Curtain Call. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the, the scaling definitely, of course, helps the side of Jaeger. Uh, oh! Oh! Nadege actually going for place. Oh, man. Almost got the gin there. Gotta say, I'm really positively impressed by Nadege over the course of the season. Game 1 didn't look all too great on that victor, but definitely has been stepping it up in Game 2 and now Game 3. The Orianna so far looking really, really good as well. And they're definitely profiting off these plays, right? Chunking out the enemy ADC. You can just go for this Tier 1 turret, maybe even get the Tier 2 with his Herald. He doesn't even charge on the first one. Yeah, um, yeah, like you said, it's, uh, indeed, like, um, I was also surprised by how Nareke actually was playing very well. First game was indeed a little bit rough, but second game he really showed what he had. And now on Oriana, doing a lot. And, and this Caitlyn having the serrated Dirk plus skill force is starting to show her true colors. Absolutely. Oh, Ryan, no, man, those kicks are just so smooth. Phobos takes a tier 2 in the top lane, tier 2 mid lane taken as well, and this Wukong still almost pulls out a kill in the 2v1, but in the meantime, Curtain Call just puts the show to an end, claims the base turret at 20 minutes and an inhibitor to boot. Man, these guys came to play here in game 3. Yeah, uh, oh, I saw Rihanna actually gets cancelled. Oh no. All yeah, being a little bit greedy, greedy, walking forward, trying to take the teleportation, taking the scenic exit, so to say. Um, yeah, as we we actually, I think this is the first time we see Bounty show up. I, I don't think we oh, had true, them. Yeah. This, this is the first time we actually saw, see the Bounties show up and available. Every single game has been so close, uh, like to a certain extent. Um, and now the Camille actually coming a little bit back into the game. Of course, Wukong now two items. Oriana two items, and as I said, this Vaker now with a death cap, probably sitting at 600, ah, 550 AP already, and that's gonna grow every single minion he kills with his Q. It's gonna grow higher and higher, and, and it's gonna it's gonna start hurting. Yeah, but then again, 
He has one combo, right? That might maybe tr takes out one player, and after that he dies because he didn't build any CDR so far. So I'm just I'm really waiting for uh, GGs to uh, get some uh, some cooldown reduction or spell haste, as it's called nowadays. In and as we see, um, um, ability haste, so close. Uh, oh, ability haste. I'll I'll take it. I I I don't really care too much. <laughs> oh, Lumi? Oh, oh the out. Gale Force engage cancels the backport of the Jin. TP's blocked immediately. But that's a Camille completely out of place. The ace in the hole makes it a double for the ADC, and that is just before Drake spawns. So a free third Drake for Curtain Call. Oh, actually, quick response here on the Baron, but I don't think they're fast enough to pick this up. They might be able to, but the rest definitely have seen it. They pinked for it, blue ward on it, um, locks oh, no. down to it, definitely doesn't help. I don't think they're yeah, going to get away with it. they are here. They are able to collapse on that one, even though the Vagar cage lands. The one shot isn't even good enough to kill the Lee Sin. There's the follow-up. The Baron still tanked at 3k. The Ace comes in, the Baron to follow up, and suddenly this game went from somewhat close to not as great to complete disaster as the base is in shambles for Jaeger. Curtain call putting on a clinic so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, they might have been able, uh, Jaeger might have been able to do something in that fight, except, oh, except that uh, Gigi was completely out of mana, not uh, using all of his mana on that Baron, not having anything left uh, really hurt. Now he's building toward that Sonya's Hourglass, it's gonna be his first bit of ability haste plus survive ability. Uh, guessing it will be the uh, cosmic drive afterwards, trying to get as much ability haste as possible. Um, but I, I think it might be too late now. Baron buff being picked up, they're gonna keep this on, on like right before the next dragon spawns, which will be sole point for the side of Curtain Call. Uh, my the curtains have opened and the curtain showed death. Uh, curtain uh, the Curtain Call decided to go for dragons instead. They called for dragons. They got the dragons. And uh, I think it might be time to uh, uh, reset and uh, get get this game off. Like they have so much like power right now. Oh, almost man. one shot anyone resetting. they see. We're engaging. We're in on the Jin Zhao. He's almost bursted out. The Crescent Guard. Beautiful double luck spining though. And Gigi with the Predator may be able to follow this one up. The curtain call on the return damage is pretty scary. But you still got Lumi in the front line. You gotta watch out with that Caitlyn because she's absolutely massive. Oh, beautiful shockwave there by Nadechi. They pick up the kill on the Camille. That's the top laner down for another 40 seconds. And with that, you don't need a Hextech soul to finish this one out you can just run it down mid forwards going deep finds the double knockup the loony in the middle of the fight takes down the Xin Zhao, the jungler down for the count the nexus turrets in shambles and with a massive game three it's gonna be kurt called calling the show calling the shots and calling gg well played yeah, no. insane game from the side of both teams. Like, Curtain Call really showing that, like, you're going to give us the Caitlyn again. This time we're going to fix our problem we had in the first game. Uh, Lee Sin has gone instead of, like, trying to go for these early picks. Like, we saw that last time they tried for it, they didn't find anything. Lee Sin instead decided to go for this really farm-heavy playstyle to start. And, like, once minute seven hits, he got his ultimate. He starts going for every single fight. His ultimate was cool, and he went for a kill in the bot lane. And he got it every single time. Lock going 0-7 at some point, uh, really showing that uh, uh, this game wasn't going to happen uh, any, like, wasn't going to happen any other way than with a yeah. win. They got an, another, like, three free dragons, right? They got the first dragons for free, get those extra base stats, and, I mean, it just helped them a lot. They got this vision control in the bot jungle, and no one was able to, like, walk anywhere. And though they had this Vagar, like, scaling against them, uh, it, I feel like they, they're just, like, in, in, individually and also as a team, like, really just, like, uh, Played better in these team fights and, and found what they were looking for. Yeah, and of course, of course, over the course of this series, uh, kind of the the endurance is something you have to mention as well, right? Because not everyone is able to perform on such a high level for multiple high pressure games in a row, and maybe that's also something that uh, that uh, I'm blanking on team names again. That Jaeger struggled a little bit with in the third game, but. 
I think it mo most credit goes to the bot lane from Curtain Call for Game 3 that they finally were able to get that leona Caitlyn combo rolling the way they wanted it to and shut down that Lux support and snowball basically the entire game off the back of that. Yeah, they, they got that one good pick right there when they decided like this this Lux, this Lux is easier target, this Lux has, has exhaust and doesn't have the cleanse that this Jin has, has this like lower movement speed. They went for the Lux, they got this early pick and I mean once Caitlyn got that first kill, even though she was a tiny bit of CS behind, see, they, they went for these fights, they got the dragons, they got this extra stats and, and they just like translated into this like whole winning game and there was just like nothing left done. All right, all right, but as it is tradition here on the Phoenix League. We have a little bit of an interview for you guys. We have Phobos with us here. Welcome, sir. Good evening and congratulations on the win. Good evening. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. The How are you feeling? <laughs> after <laughs> the devastating game two, not really good, but after game three, my evening is saved. I can imagine. I mean, you pulled out a pretty good game on that Wukong after all, but you mentioned that game too already. Talk me through that a little bit. Were you caught off guard by how hard Jaeger stepped up there? It was mostly the, comp the composition. Uh, hmm. The Caitlyn first pick just caught us off guard. Uh, we had very minimal engage, so they just shot everything at us from long distance. We couldn't really engage, so we were kind of doomed. Fair, fair enough. You, you just say draft diff in that game flat out and nothing else Pretty much, yeah. to yeah. draft diff then you take the negative three and just dodge man <laughs> if we started with a draft diff and then them getting an early lead just was the nail in the coffin yeah, we almost yeah. brought it back though with two baron steals i believe yeah yeah ryan definitely uh pulling uh, pulling some strings there and then getting getting those two baron steals one actually you all got away with even like he, he got out and all of you guys were alive but you Pretty guys much. weren't able to close that out, right? Like, uh, and how, how did it feel? Like, because uh, you, you were fighting Camille three times in a row, and you were playing three different champions every single time. Uh, like, like, did you did you like? Because you you kept you you went on. You, we had you had two counter picks, and then you had uh, Wukong, which I mean, it's like more like a skill matchup, I guess. Yeah. Um, how how would you like? Um, did you did you like try? Did you like understand more of the matchup the more longer you played it? Like, was it like because you were playing the same? guy on the same champion did you like see see pattern as he did or like did you uh, adapt your play style uh, after like every single game because you saw what he did or not well i kind of he they were a friendly bunch so i don't really want to flame them that much <laughs> but <laughs> yeah i took it low. as a scrim i took it as a scrim just because practicing three champions against the same champion is beneficial for me but it was so boring like can we have some action in top lane? I had to solo kill this guy like twice. <laughs> we need some I variation. Mean, you had some attention from the junglers in game one and two, but game three definitely was uh, the good old top lane island after all, right? Pretty much. But um, talk to me a little bit about uh, about how your team works in general. Who's uh, who's the main shot caller for you guys? Uh, the main shot caller should be Ryan. He's a jungler. Like he sees the entire map, but mm. in team fights. Everyone steps up, mainly the mid laner, the dash. Um, mm -hmm. But mostly, whoever sees something, we just say it. Just uh, focusing on not over clutting the uh, the comms. So definitely, definitely more of a team communi communication effort. Love to hear that. And um, how you, were you guys approaching that Caitlyn Leona lane in game three? Because in game one, it didn't quite work out the way we at least imagined it would. But game three, you were able to put down the pedal to the metal, like in the early game, and snowball off of that. It was basically just seeing that they picked Lux, and it was just like the meme of, and then we took it personally. <laughs> uh, we just had to slam it because it worked out so well in game one. And a Lux from behind is not going to have the best time, mainly when the entire map is on fire. Oh, that is true. That is true indeed. Yeah, and we, we really, really see that happen indeed. Like after that first kill happened, I think she ended uh, zero, zero, 10 in, in kills. Um, yep. uh, so Unlucky. it really, yeah, really shown that like once the, the Lux falls behind, of course, it's, it's, it's very hard uh, to like get anything done on a, on a champion like that.
Yeah. And Odesh, uh playing that Oriana game three, were you guys expecting a Victor ban at some point in this series? Or did that catch you by surprise as well? It kind of ca caught us by surprise because the mid laner and the dash uh, just said that he didn't really contribute that much to the games. <laughs> but it might be just uh, his ego just being so self-conscious. Maybe he's but, just humble. Yeah, but it really didn't put us that far behind in terms of team comps, so I don't know. Again, well, the Oriana just... worked well. Yeah. I mean, the Oriana was a plan from the get-go, but it only came out in game three. All right, all right. Interesting to hear. But that means we got so you guys got some more comps prepared, and I'm not gonna uh, ask you to reveal any of those. We'll see some more games from you guys over the course of the season. But for now, great start, I'd say. You can call that a satisfying result, more or less, in that two, uh, two, one victory here. Phobos, yeah. Anything else you want to say? Shout out anyone. That is uh, the perfect opportunity to do so. Um, I'd just like to thank my team for being there. Uh them stepping up when it mattered. Uh, I'd like to thank our analyst, the support's wife. She's always supportive of us, so shout out to oh, her. Yeah. Sh uh, shout out to Beridon. And then uh, for our organization, uh, Curtain Call Gaming. Pretty awesome, much there you go. Gotta, gotta give credit to the people in the background after all. All right, Phobos, thank you so much for joining us. Have a, a wonderful rest of your evening, the rest of your weekend, and uh, hopefully talk to you again soon. Thank you for having me. Good evening as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Phobos from Curtain Call Gaming. They pull out the win 2-1 against the boys over on Jaeger Esports. Quill, that was an exciting series, right? Yeah, it was, it was a very interesting series. Actually going back and forth, actually both teams stepping it up in drafting. First game we saw a lot of standard things. Uh, there's the, the, the Victor, the Jinx, the, uh, the Caitlyn being picked up, like very standard stuff, things we've seen in, 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 in other leagues. Um, and then actually like the more games we got, the more like surprise or picks we got. Actually getting yeah. to see the Lux Caitlyn really explosive and actually being it being played very well. And then in game two, uh, three actually seeing the, the Wukong Oriana as something like a, a bit older. Like it's something close mm. to like, you know, the, the old Jarvan or, or uh, Hecarim uh, Oriana combo. And uh, now with the Wukong, yeah, it was really showing that they like were able to play different comps, more pick comps, and and also this last, which was like a really easy like bot lane gets ahead, and we keep ganking that mid lane farms, top lane kill solo kills, and, and jungle the goes everywhere, and uh, they they played the, the team fights really well, and, and they showed that uh, once we got those dragons, so we we win this game, and they, yeah, they really closed it out. Objective control was a huge thing, but the comps as well. So overall, a very exciting stuff, but. Overall, I think that basically almost settles it for us. Any last words you want to have? No, I, I think I think we had a very like very three really clean games. Uh, uh, second game lasted a bit too long uh, uh, for <laughs> for comfort. Uh, uh, at some point, you also get tired as a caster. Like the, 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 you keep talking, uh, it happens of course. Ah, you gotta game. love the forty minute bangers, man. For, forty minute bangers <laughs> definitely feel that, especially if the first ten minutes I'm unable to talk since anyone everyone just wants to fight all game long. Yeah, no, uh, it was very clean games from both sides, and I uh, I wish them good luck uh, in the upcoming tournaments. Uh, yeah, gonna be good fun, all right. But that is kind of all there is to say. Nothing, else, nothing, not much else I can add. Sorry, there we go. My English is gone at this time of the day. It's time to wrap this up. So, definitely drop Red Gaming here a follow on Twitch. Definitely follow Red Gaming on social media. Make sure you are aware of all the esports action that is upcoming because the Phoenix League is going to start off hot with even more matches, both in the Platinum and the Diamond Division. Also, if you want some more interesting content, maybe for you uh, analyst-oriented guys, we have a little bit of a podcast starting off tomorrow evening, I think at 8 p.m. Uh, German time, that is, uh, or... CET, there we go, Central or GMT European. plus one, whatever you uh, you prefer in terms of time zones. You definitely want to check the uh, freeze frame. Is it? It is called. You definitely want to check that one out. Some cool people working on that. And yeah, other than that, we'll be back with more esports action soon. And until then, 
Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Also, of course, thanks to our sponsors, Esports, Grim, Rogue Energy, and Leakworks. We hope to see you again soon. Have a good night. Bye-bye. See you guys.